Good evening, party people, and welcome back to the Bar with an X. My name is Cameron, and I will be your bartender this evening. As you may already know, lemon is an anagram for melon. Melon comes in a variety of different forms. You can drink it straight out of the bottle. You can drink it straight out of the rind, I suppose. And there's many different forms of melons and whatnot that populate this beautiful place that we call Earth. Which, to be fair, if you take a look at the curvature of the Earth, kind of looks like a melon in the, sense, in the sense that it is oddly ovular and similar to a sphere like some of these beautiful guys are right here. We are joined by my very close friends, Robbie, uh, the, uh, the honeydew, Robert, the cantaloupe, and Roberta, the watermelon, for a wonderful evening of exploring the wonders of melons, whether they come in watermelon form, cantaloupe form, Japanese melon form in the form of a liquor, or, um, the cantaloupe, which I continue to forget about. These cocktails are gonna blow your rind, is the pun that I'm gonna go with to start things off over here. We got melons and stuff, and by the end of the stream, every single one of these beautiful friends that I have here will be cut in at least half. And uh, that is a promise that I will make for you this evening. I see Brad out there already saying, I feel like some of those bobbies aren't really gonna survive the night. You may be, you may be correct there. Brad, how was that concert of yours the other night? I think it was, uh, oh, oh, I can't remember the band name, but uh, I remember you posted a picture about it. How was that? Uh, we'll get things started over here, specifically with this cantaloupe. Uh, the first recipe that we're going to cover tonight is called The Magic Melon, and it is from a wine website who tried to get themselves into cocktails, and every once in a while they do something right there, so we'll try about it. Brad saying it was great. Matchbox 20 is great. They rock hard for the old dudes. They're all like 50 and stuff. Dude, that's great. I was, it's interesting. I, um, my father uh, works for a record company, and so a lot of the artists and whatnot that he winds up going to see or winds up working with and stuff are, uh, they're, they're like literally all over in ages. I think uh, the band that he plays with right now, Angel, I want to say that the original band members are like 60 plus now. I mean, I don't know if I'm being disingenuous with that, um, with those assumptions or those estimations and stuff. Uh, they look like they've gotten a lot of work done. They, great, they look great for whatever age that they are, and they continue to shred it very, very well. I'm curious to see what, if, if there was an older, if there were an older set of performers, which which instruments were they shredding on? Is it is it more like guitar and stuff or like bass and whatever? Or, my dad rocks a synthesizer, so rock and roll is totally up my alley. Um, so the first cocktail that we have for this evening is one called the Magic Melon, and it apparently comes from Tomasillo Winery. We've mentioned them a couple of times around here, mostly because they are one of the local wineries over in New Jersey. They produce a number of fine wines that a couple of my, uh, like, uh, like IRL friends and whatnot are very very uh, very big big fans of and honestly it was so interesting i was at the liquor store the other day and i actually saw their wines in the store they were heavily discounted they were very much on clearance because apparently they don't sell super well at least around here but the fact that i was able to find them in my local liquor store was actually kind of cool it seems that um just the you know the local jurisdictions and stuff are intermingling and we like to see that and the other reason i want to start with this cantaloupe is when we went to the, i went to the store and i bought all these watermelons today so went to the store coming back with all these melons and stuff anna was helping me so i can't pretend that i did it alone um this one was like the most fragrant like if you ever go to the grocery store and you see like pineapples for some reason look pineapples give off a great fragrance and i am imagining that's what attracts like all the flies and stuff to them and i saw the same thing for the cantaloupe so i was like where are the cantaloupes and they were behind a big column you could not find them except behind like in the shadow of this one big old support beam and i was like cantaloupes and when i peeked my head over there was a bunch of flies that flew up i was like oh my goodness gracious and as i'm sitting there in the swarth of flies googling what is it? What is it? How can you tell if a cantaloupe is ripe? How can you tell if a honeydew is ripe? A watermelon is ripe? Um, evidently, if it is not green, it is ripe. Uh, Robert is not very green, very much of the yellow variety. Um, uh, evidently, while we're on the topic of things, you can tell your cantaloupe is ripe if it's not green. You can tell that your honeydew melon is ripe if the side opposite of where the stem was growing out of is soft. So I have, let's see. I'll bring the cocktail angle over here to, it's not even a cocktail angle, it's the it's the watermelon hole angle, I suppose. Um, so this side was attached to a stem at one point. It's pretty, pretty rough. But on the other side, if it's slightly squishy, I don't know if you can tell my finger pushing in there, but it is a slightly squishy honeydew melon. And that's how you can tell if those guys are ripe. To be honest, I'm not super sure about how to, I don't recall what it was that made watermelons ripe or not. I can't really remember, but I'm going to guess it's something similar. The, the, this watermelon in particular, Roberta, 
I love Roberta, but uh, Roberta is very heavy, and this is this is not a set of mus uh, muscles that I have well trained just yet. I have s currently started doing arm exercises to remedy that eventually, uh, but we're not at that point yet. So uh, we move on with things, whereas we start with the Magic Melon. A blended cocktail from Tomasello Winery because I want to get this cantaloupe out of here. It is, I can see what it's doing, and I want it in a plastic bag, processed and otherwise. So we're going to move, we're going to go to that. I'll take... Uh, what was your name? Your name is Robbie. I'll put Robbie over here. Gotta hang with the little fruits basket. There we go. Okie doke. Let me take care of this melon. So in order to make a magic melon, we did a number of different things. We It is from a wine website, a wine vineyard. So we need to start off with some wine. We also need vodka, melon puree, um, which I think the melon puree, the, the, I think the implication here is that to create the melon puree, you need cantaloupe or at least a cup of the cantaloupe, because the recipe here says two ounces of white wine, an ounce of vodka, an ounce of melon puree, an entire cup of cantaloupe, and a half of ounce of simple syrup, two basil leaves. The instructions say blend the cantaloupe and simple syrup until smooth, combine and shake. So I am imagining that the, the puree that we are creating is actually just this cantaloupe, or at least a cup of it, combined with something. So it's blended the cantaloupe and the simple syrup. So we're taking cantaloupe, simple syrup, blending them into a puree, and then we're going to add that to the cocktail. Of note two is we top it off with lemon lime soda. And so I'm actually very interesting to see, because it says nothing about straining this thing, right? We're blending it all together, we're pouring it into a glass, and then we're going to top it with, um, with lemon lime soda, some Sprite. And I'm just kind of curious to see what we're going to get with that, because it, interestingly enough, I'm like, I feel like if we add soda in there, there's just gonna be like chunks of cantaloupe kind of floating up to the top and it's gonna separate after a while. I don't know, we're doing the cooking by the book and whatever consequences that garner for us, we're gonna go with it. Also, I just noticed that my chair is not in the right spot. So I'm gonna use the dowel of discipline to push my chair off to a different location. Hopefully this works and I don't break the dowel of discipline. Oh, I've made it worse. Wait, wait. All right, it's not working. I'm, I ruined it. Hold on. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. I'm going chair right away. Give her you. There we go. That's not a problem anymore. Just so many things to keep track of before this stream starts. It's just wild. So many things. We've actually made quite a couple of changes around here. You might notice that th things may sound a little different. We finally got a cool microphone. And look! It has lights! Isn't that fun? Been meaning to upgrade that for a little while. And finally, finally it came in. So... Let's process this cantaloupe. I will be honest, going into this, I bought a bunch of fruits and stuff. This is a big, this is a big fruit waste stream here, and I want to be for, I want to be for uh, upfront about that. Um, so actually, we're Anna and I are going to a wedding this weekend, so we're actually going to be doing a little bit of traveling and stuff, and so we're going to be hanging on the beach with a couple of friends and ours after they get married. It's going to be so great. So one of the reasons we planned it this way was because we're going to have a lot of fruit left over. I'm going to put them all up in plastic bags and stuff. We're going to take them down to the shore with us so everybody can reap the benefits that is all the food that we have provided for them in the form of fruits and other things that bring sugars to our body. So let's cut this cantaloupe open, shall we? I think, I don't recall whether or not we want to save a piece of this for the garnish at the end. Why not? We'll cut off a, we'll cut off a little bit of a slice of it and we'll save that for the end. Or I'll put whatever we don't use into the bag, into a little plastic bag that I got and we'll come back to it later if we need more garnish and stuff. But the first thing we got to do is cut this thing. So I have one of my cutting boards from downstairs. I bring it up here. It's green, just like the melon. Uh, not this melon, uh, that melon. And this melon, whatever's in this bottle over here, it's it's oddly appropriate. It's gonna work out just fine. Um, and so the first thing we need to do is we need to make that melon puree. So I think the best thing that we could possibly do is we need to get a cup of cantaloupe somehow, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do so by going to this thing. So we'll just cut this cantaloupe right down the middle. It was very easy to do. It took absolutely no effort at all. Now I believe I think the 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 shtick for properly doing these this melons is that you need to, you can scoop out the inside. You can cut around it if you want to, um, but I think generally speaking, if you want to get the, like the, the, the mid part out, just kind of take a spoon to it, just kind of scoop it out, get it all out of there. I don't really have a big spoon over here. I probably should have grabbed one. Um, we can use one of my bar spoons and see if that comes out easily just to get the waste out of the way. There's my bucket. I know Taylor's around here somewhere. I brought her up specifically. There we go. Found you. Found the bucket. Bucket makes the return. Bucket is hungry for melon mitts today. Um, that or I might just process this toward the end. Um, I might just stick around a little bit at the end after all the cocktails and stuff are over to uh, do a little bit of cleanup and whatnot. Um, just because I've uh, got, a, got a bit of a deadline that we're going with. But uh, actually, yeah, this is this is really, really easy. So let me, let me show you all what's going on over here in terms of, um, you know, our melon adventures. 
pop you guys down here. Oh, look at that! That's a nice shot of the melon. Let's see if I can do things in a, in a cool way so that we can all see what's going on. Let's scoop out pieces of the melon. Let me pull you up just a tad. You can see my wa slightly watermelon-inspired outfit this evening. And we'll kind of do some scoopage. But I think, honestly, this is really easy to take out. So I'm inclined to just go right around here and see if I can just go on the inside and just scoop all those seeds out. Doesn't seem like it's going to be too difficult. Just kind of scoop right in there. And do that. I'll also have note too. I actually have uh, when Anna and I. I'll bring it out later when, when it calls for the garnishes and stuff. When we went to uh, the food and wine festival in Disney World, the, they were actually doing a little bit of a, a demo. They were doing a little um, play by play of how to make like art using um, what was it? It was um, using watermelons and stuff. So they gave us melon ballers for free. Actually, the tool that I have is this guy right here. So I could be using this melon baller if I wanted to. Oh, let me know. Just I'll just show you. You know, you scoop in there. Get a little, get a little melon ball. Check it out. Little, little ball of melon. Oh, it tastes delicious. I don't, I don't remember what it was. Very early on in my streaming career. I remember playing Minecraft or something one day. And I just happened to have a bunch of melon left over from, I think, a cocktail we made. And I was like, holy shit, guys. Melons taste amazing. What an excellent snack to have. And then it all went bad and molded into my fridge because I'm not one for snacking. So, um, but I'm better now. It's been like two years. It's all about 1% improving every single day. I've been reading books recently. One of those books is a, books call, a book called Atomic Habits. And it's about habits being atomic. And by atomic, we mean powerful or on their smallest level. That's just kind of, that's the implications of the statement there. Um, it's made by, it's uh, written by a dude named James Clear, who uh, honestly, I love that dude's personality. Is great, inspiring, made things, made complicated topics seem very, very easy. And I would highly recommend that book to anybody else who's out there. I think. It might be considered a self-help book, and if that's just the demographic that I now find myself in in my mid-20s, then all right, so be it. I will take it. Anybody out there who's trying to expend effort into improving themselves, I've got a lot of respect for it. So, holla. I feel that. Anyway, getting all those little gunky bits out. So let's put them in there. Put them in the bucket. And I'm scraping. I'm also, I'm doing my effort to kind of scrape all the seeds and stuff out as well, because I really don't want to eat the seeds. It's not, not really what I'm a fan of. I'll also notice, too, there is like a kind of thicker part on the inside. It's a little more stringy and stuff. And I'm trying to get all the strands out too, where all the, I don't know what that right word is. I want to say pith, but I don't really know specifically. But I think for the most part, our <laughs> Robert has been completely gouged out. So now we need a cup of Robert's worth to put into a blender and then we do something with them. Do the blendage. This is my cup, it measures a cup. I'm gonna try to fill this entire cup up with um with melon. And I think actually the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to just take Robert. I'm going to cut one slice down this way just so I can have access to the rind. I'll peel the rind off a little bit and I'll just kind of take from the flesh on the inside. I think we've kind of made it a little bit easier for ourselves now. There we go. Let's see if I can get a full cup's worth out of that. I don't really know. I'm not a melon, I'm not a melon surgeon. I'm not a melon expert. However, it is all exploration. For the purposes, for the for the betterment of our drinks, we will explore the melons. That is that is what our goal is today. All different types of melons. Every melon will get at least one drink. There will be a couple of Midori drinks. There will be a shot. Of course, there's got to be a shot. I feel like I feel like one of the things I got to consider going forward is there always has to be a shot, right? It's got to be a shot. But either either there's a coffee drink for me or a shot for everyone else. It's just this is how it's got to be going forward. And now we'll have snacking melons. Oh my god, we will! And it's gonna be great. Um, I should be taking- I gotta take my rings off for these guys. Every time- whenever I'm dealing with sticky stuff, I gotta- I gotta take my rings off or else it becomes a problem. I'm just gonna cut. I'll turn- I was gonna say I'll turn it, but it's we're having a hard time turning it, so I'm just gonna do a little- a little like that. See if that works. Yeah, your pal. I can see you guys. I can see the little guys already coming from my- Coming from my cantaloupe. You can't have my cantaloupe. I don't want you to have my cantaloupe. You know what? This is more than a cup, but we're just gonna go for it. I, this is this is all going in the blender. This is all this is all going in the blender. It's gonna all go in the blender. Yep, everything, everything in the blender. Well, something's going in my mouth. Everything else is going in the blender, though. I'm gonna do a little bit of clean. A little bit of cleaning my hands up for the sake of making sure that everything gets used. I'm employing more techniques. I'm taking these plastic bags less personally. So I'm gonna put this in a plastic bag. And the other part. 
and we'll make sure to get things later. Because lo and behold, these streams will last for hours, and I don't really feel like keeping an open-faced melon um, available until the very end. Otherwise, that would just be that'd just be a recipe for disaster. So we're gonna ziplock this thing up. It's got the double zips on it, so this ain't nobody's getting in here. Not unless they find themselves inside as I make that final close. And we'll go for it later. Uh, hopefully I don't forget to chop these things up before I turn off the camera. Everything is content or so they say. And so that's what we'll do with it. We got a cup of cant- a cup of cantaloupe. A quality cup of cantaloupe. I love that. And um, yeah, now we gotta blend it. We gotta blend it with some simple syrup. Uh, fresh simple syrup from earlier today. Interestingly enough, Whenever I make simple syrup, all of my simple syrups come out not clear, a different color, interestingly enough. And um, somebody pointed that out to me um, a while back. And I was like, well, I don't think it's a problem per se. Um, Cause like, you know, the sugar that goes into it is not necessarily like pure white cane sugar, not bleached sugar. So it's not gonna come out uh, white or clear. But, um, and, and that fact shows itself true. Because as I made my, Sip syrup, trying not to knock over egg stuff I had in there. Um, it came out really, really clear this time, and I'll show you all. This is, like, there is very clearly a difference between simple syrup made with bleached white sugar versus simple syrup that is made with, I guess, literally any other kind of sugar. And then I usually just do raw cane sugar, not not bleached or anything like that. Um, so every all the simple syrups that I wind up making uh, are not clear in color because I don't buy, I usually don't buy white uh, white sh uh, sugar, um, but recently I did because oh get out of here. get out of here dude get out of here. Recently I did because uh, we ran out of sugar. I used all the sugar in the house, and Anna was like, "Why'd you do that? We got nothing to make with." And I was like, "All right." So I got my own. I have my own sugar supply now, specifically for streams, um, and so we can use that now. We're gonna blend stuff up. We need a total of a half an ounce, or about whoa 15 milliliters of simple syrup we're not doing a lot of blending here we're only making one cocktail so this might be a little bit overkill bringing out um hamilton the blender for all this but this is what we're doing anyways nobody wants bleach in their sugar i certainly don't want bleach in their sugar but hell you know what only the best from domino since 1901 it is best by the year 2026 i can also try golden sugar it's a less processed sugar than white granulated sugar domino golden sugar bakes dissolves and measures cup for cup just like white granulated sugar who knew depending on the who knew that the color of your sugar really doesn't matter um although sometimes it can't right i guess you know dark dark su brown sugar tastes a little bit different than other types of sugars and stuff terminado versus demerara there's there's different purposes there but that's not necessarily because of the color of the sugar because of, like the chemical makeup of the sugar which does err towards what kind of color it's going to show up as but it's a lot more complex than just what you see with your eyes or via spectrometry spectroscopy spectroscopy anyway let's put it all in there we're putting an entire cup of cantaloupe cantaloupe melons for our melon our melon puree um and then we need a half an ounce of simple syrup so let's put a half an ounce of simple syrup in there um, this one was made fresh today. Um, it is super duper viscous. I think I made it with my induction cooker. So actually get a load of this. So made it with my induction cooker and pop this up here. Huh, melons. Uh, and I usually do two to one ratio of sugar to water by weight. And I think a lot of that water boiled off. So I think this is a lot more thick than I anticipated it to be. And the sugar is like crystallizing at the bottom. So, uh, not necessarily my success a success, but like not really a failure either. Like it's just a different kind of simple syrup. I, uh, I remember reading somewhere that like the point of simple syrup is to be combinable with, um, with other spirits and stuff. So like this is really, really viscous. Like usually what you'll do with something like this is you'll combine it with water if it were honey, for instance, specifically to make it more pourable. Like this is very, very, very viscous. This is straight up like candy and stuff and it's actually kind of wild i poured a little bit more in there because it's so viscous um i've never used syrup like this before it's probably damn sweet at least i hope it to be and that'll be the base of it it could very well be the tastiest syrup out there and i am going to taste this because i mean how, how could i not it's literally just sitting there i didn't know it's interesting i have never produced a syrup of this quality I, this is totally by accident so if you increase the sugar amount you will make something that is inevitably a lot more viscous Let's see how that tastes. Put my finger in it. I'll scoop a little bit more off. There you go. We're not afraid of getting a little dirty. 
I remember actually when I was a when I was a child. I, I'm still a child. When we go hiking in the woods, never be afraid to use your hands and feet. That's the difference between like falling down, like falling down a cliff. Straight up like candy. That's literally candy. That's delicious, man. I gotta I gotta clean up the side of this glass too. So pl please excuse me a moment while I. Hmm. Gotta clean things up. Gotta clean things up. I'm gonna grab a paper towel too, because I don't like the sides of these things getting sticky and stuff. That's the problem. Uh, two reasons why I try not to keep sugar uh, syrups around very long. Uh, for the one part, things get sticky and weird, and for the other part, sometimes they get moldy. This is not gonna get very moldy. This has a shit ton of sugar in it. Like, this thing is gonna be shelf stable for a while because of how much gunk is in there. Because you know, the less water is in something, the less likely it's going to mold. I say as I wipe the sides of this with a very moist towel. Um, but you know, problems for later, Cameron. I love to make, I like to make life easier for future Cameron, but sometimes just because I'm a little conniving is I like to make things a little bit difficult for a future Cameron. We gotta keep life spicy around here. I'll put the simple syrup away. We don't need it anymore. Not for this recipe. Maybe for another. Oh, don't fall. Oh my God. Everything you see over here is relatively organized. Everything behind, not as much. All right, so we need to blend this sucker. So we'll do so. Actually, I just noticed that one of my pieces in there, blender is not plugged in, by the way. I'm sticking my hand in a blender because it's not plugged in, I say. Uh, but there's a little piece of that. There's a little piece of the skin there, and I don't want the skin in here. Now I'm doing the blender. And actually, we're gonna try something. This microphone, I can mute it manually and I can adjust the gain ad hoc. So I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna see whether or not, um, if this thing is gonna like kill our eardrums and stuff, I'm just gonna take the gain. I'm gonna turn it all the way down. This is as far down as it's gonna go. I don't know if this is gonna make things sound any better or not. You certainly can't hear me as well, uh, but we're gonna blend this now and hopefully it's not gonna kill people's eardrums. Work in progress. We're gonna blend this thing. I need to chop this thing. There we go. I've got to put it in pulse mode first. You kind of sound like you're in a distant tunnel. That kind of makes sense, right? I could just mute the thing too, but... Oh, come on now. Come on, dude. I am not a professional blender. <laughs> Hopefully there's just enough liquid. You just gotta get this thing started. We're getting there, slowly but surely, maybe. This is why we're doing the blender first. progress it is it is getting it's, it's getting more liquid get it in there i gotta get this thing over top of the bleeds we're gonna get a better we're gonna have a better blender on our wedding registry we do an alley-oop 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 there we go maybe maybe this is the one there we go It's a slow and steady progress. It is more liquidy. When that liquid gets in there, it makes a different noise. That's hopefully the point, I would assume. This is not quite totally there yet, but we're gonna keep on giving it a try. This thing totally smells fine. Yeah, this blender makes very interesting smells. Get in there, dude. Yeah, man. There are still so many chunks in there. It's so wild. There's so many chunks in here. 
I'll just give a little bit of, I'm gonna give it a little bit of encouragement. I'm gonna push everybody to the center. Everybody's gonna get to be a part of the party now. Everybody. Every single piece of cantaloupe. Every single piece of Robert. That tastes lovely, by the way. Absolutely delightful. I can either I can either continue to struggle with this or help myself out a little bit. I'm gonna add like half an ounce of water in there. Make things a little bit easier. <laughs> I don't know. Remember, work smarter, not harder. Whether or not it wants to be done or not is not a question anymore. It's done. I'm done with it. Whoops. Hello, microphone. Let's unplug this thing. If there is more, if there is more cantaloupe puree to be had, I don't want it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm moving on. Who am I to dwell on the past? Brad says a little extra water will help with what that with the simple might have been missing too. Yeah, I think it was the simple syrup was not as liquid as it probably should have been. And the recipe called for just the usually when it calls for simple syrup, you want to do like a one to one. But I use simple syrup relatively often, so I may, tried to do a two to one just to make it last a little bit longer. It worked against me this time. That's a that's a piece of experience that I don't yet have to be able to contextualize when to use one type of syrup versus another. But now that we have our melon puree, we can add everything else together. Evidently, we're putting everything together. We're shaking it anyway. So if there's a little bit of pieces and stuff, whatever, we're going to work with it. Let's grab ourselves a shaker. One like this, perhaps. As I said, trying to catch it. I missed it. That's okay. We're working on our flare techniques over here. So make things a little bit better. And I'm going to put this guy away. I'm not going to use this uh, measuring majigger again. I'm going to just put it all in there. Combine, shake, pour over ice with top with soda. Specifically Sprite. I'll grab myself a glass over here. Let's see. I'll do... This one, is it, uh, but I want to use that for a different one. So I'm gonna use a stein. But what do I think of what I think of a cantaloupe? I don't know. <laughs> Screw it. You know what? Giddy up. We're gonna use the boot. Cantaloupe. I think of cantaloupe like home, home on the range, or like elope is in like galloping. Cantaloupe, gallop. It, it rings in my head. We're gonna use the boot mug for this one because why the hell not? All right. So we evidently need. Only an ounce of our melon puree. That's fun. All right, cool, cool. That's that's wonderful then. Let me grab a big old ice cube over here. I just want to rip things apart. I want a big old ice cube to rip things apart. Get all those pieces of cantaloupe. To get to know each other. So, go for it. Canterlope. See, Brad's got it. Brad's got it. Let's see. So we need a full ounce of our puree here. So let's try that. A full ounce or about 30 milliliters of this cantaloupe puree that we've just put together. Hello, 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 hello. Who just popped in over there? I saw somebody pop in. What's going on? Jasper, why are melons always single? Because they can't elope. <laughs> oh, those jokes are really blowing my rind there. It's funny. Oh my God. We like puns around here. We really appreciate puns. Um, I'm going to take this other piece of the cantaloupe and put it away. <laughs> I'm going to put it over there. Evidently, I'm not using the rest of the cantaloupe. We only we blended up an entire cup of cantaloupe and a half an ounce of simple syrup just to use a single ounce of it. It barely makes any sense. Um, but that's what Tomasella Winery wants us to do. So that's what we're going to do because the recipe is from them. You'd think that I'd be using their wine. I'm not. I'm not going to. Now we need an ounce of vodka. Which kind of vodka? Let's take a peek here. I am so done with Tito's. I want it out of my house. I'm going to use the rest of the Tito's. Maybe not the rest of the Tito's. I don't know if it calls for all of it. Oh, we're so close. So close. So close to using all the Tito's. Oh my goodness. Getting there eventually. Could just 
Could just take the rest of it. Not going to though. Not healthy. Not a good thing to do. And now we need two ounces of... If you were going to follow the Tomasello Winery recipe by the book, you would use Tomasello Winery's Shorehouse White Wine. If you're following along at home and you happen to be around the greater South Jersey area, um, I don't have that. So I'm just going to use this wine that I've been using for cooking for the past couple of weeks. It's Barefoot. It's Pinot Grigio. It's white. And that's really... Whoa! You got carbonated in there, pal. Wowza. More culture for me. Two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of your white wine of choice. Jasper says, would you like a bottle? Would I like a bottle? <laughs> no, don't go out of your way for me. Um, I probably use it for cooking though. Honestly, this is just this is just the white wine that I've chosen for cooking recently. So if you if you provide a bottle of that, it will probably be used in food going forward. Eventually, maybe the kitchen with an X will make an appearance at some point in the future, but as of now, there are no plans for that. Um, but the next time I stop by, maybe we can share a glass of it together. That'd be wonderful. Brad is saying, oh, Brad saying, it's Prino Grigio. It's white. It's fermenting in the bottle. Pfft, exactly. That's what white things in bottles do, right? That's the that's the implication of that statement. All right, let's get this thing washed out. This measure of the jigger. Got, it's got vodka in it. It's got melon in it. And it provides hydration for our body. Let's stick things together, give that a shake, and see what happens. All right, so now we're gonna pour this thing over ice and top it off with soda, specifically lemon lime soda. I'm just gonna use Sprite. Sprite's available. Sprite's what we got. Let's bring the cocktail angle over here so we can watch the magic happen. We require ice. Let's put some ice in there, right? I'd use my little cubes and stuff, but I'm actually inclined to, this time, utilize, uh, I'm gonna use the States of America, I think. Did I refill those guys? I don't really know. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I filled up some of the United States, so we're gonna use as much of it as we can. Jasper says, white things in bottles ferment. Is it bad my brain went to humans before anything else? That's where my brain went. But then again, I all I see in the morning when I look in the mirror is a white dude anyway who is fermenting on the inside, probably. So I might be a little biased there. Let's see, I just put Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada. The West Coast is getting it today. Also California. It says put it over ice. I don't exactly know how much ice. I'm putting some of the bigger states in there. Let's put a uh, Minnesota. My fingers are so cold. Oh my god. Let's go with New Mexico and Arizona. I get the two mixed up. I don't know which one's which. And even if somebody educated me, I'd still be wrong the next time. Um, Wyoming or Colorado was already gone. And um, let's see. Um, Florida. Because when I think of Florida, I think of uh, Disney and movies and stuff. And that's in support of uh, the, the folks who are striking right now. Because uh, get, get paid good wages. That's what we're all about. Ice. Let's put things over ice. It says nothing about straining. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take what we have. Um, I just don't want the big old ice cube in there, so I'm just gonna block that with my finger. And we're supposed to top that off with club soda or with uh, our Sprite, so. There's our boot. This is our boot. It's our boot of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's that. Great. And now we need to top it off, so there we go. And we're also supposed to, oh, it says, Two, ba ba two basil leaves. There's nothing here that says what I'm supposed to do with those basil leaves, but I'm gonna garnish it with basil leaves. There we go. There's that. I'll put things behind me. And I'll grab myself some basil leaves. We got those. We got those. Benzu. Basu. Garnish. Garnish amethyst and pearl. And gin and tonics. I don't know. Trying to make a Steven Universe thing here. Hello, Basil. Hello, Basil. We're gonna. Ooh, let me bring you up a little bit. Hello, Basil. Oh, this smells lovely. Um, I had basil in the house for a while, uh, but it's gone. So, Bermutha is officially no longer with us, and it is unfortunate. Pop a couple of basil leaves in there. Get these two little guys to sit for a little while. I'll put the big guy back in the back. There we go. Have a little good time. A little bit of. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, you want to. I know you want to relax. I know you want to relax. Hello there. Hello there, little squishy. The squishy little guy. Here we go. Oh, hello. There we go. Let's trying our bestest here. Move the boot closer. I don't know, man. 
trying our best is RIP, they were just so young. I agree with that. I don't know what I'm doing fiddling around with this. Only the good die young, and Bermutha was very good. But eventually we'll have Bermutha too at some point. I need the, the, the basil can't be away for long. I really like the smell of basil. It's, it was just subtracting so much. That's when my fly problem started. All right, pal. You were giving me the vibe. Let's take a picture of our vibe here. What are we using our cantaloupe for? Oh, maybe I should have a picture of the can. I should have the cantaloupe behind it. Pose for the photo. That's what I'm going to do. Robert is going to pose behind it for the photo. Um, and then I will flip it so that everybody else can get a beautiful view of this as well. There we go. Put the little cantaloupe behind it. We're working on our framing over here. Oh, come on, photo. Hello, photo. Oh, you're like so... There you go. So pretty. All these photos will wind up on the cocktail blog later. And some of them make appearance, guest appearances on all the shorts that we do. Hello, now everybody can see it, because I'm done. I'm done with it. Check, take a check. It's got a cantaloupe behind it. The cantaloupe's name was Robert. Now Robert's dead. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but we, but we move like that around here. And that's what we have. Oh, let me do a little cleanup of my uh, shakers over here. I don't think I really need to do so, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Try to keep things clean, you know? Tried to stay sober, tried to stay clean. Wake me when it's over like a bad dream. Mama doesn't call, sister never writes. Bet you they would laugh if I tried to say goodbye. No one put a worry, notice when I'm gone. Jasper says it reminds me of Bernie. Bernie! Oh. What was that movie called? Night at Bernie's or something like that? Where the dude's like, he's dancing because he's, he's just dead? Um, I don't know. Oh, Bernie! Or, uh, okay, then my mind also went to the Muppets, like Bert and Ernie. Or Bert and or Ernie. It really depends. Alright, let's switch things back over. We've had enough time staring at, um, the half, the, the dead other half of the cantaloupe. Robert. I also need to, I need to, I need to zip lock this bag again because otherwise it's gonna get, it's gonna get weird and funky to track all the flies and stuff. We don't want to do that. We're already attracting them. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Put you back over here. Have fun, pal. This is our magic melon. Uh, the thing that we have to do now is give it a taste. I'm actually quite surprised that all in all, there isn't a lot of chunks of cantaloupe in here. And I think it's just because the cantaloupe itself is very easy to break apart. So as it was in the blender, it was being ripped to pieces. As we were shaking it in the shaker tin, the big ice cube was also just completely ripping that thing to shreds. It was great. Um, I feel like this needs a straw. This feels very straw worthy. Actually, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this guy over here. This feels more appropriate. I love this thing here. Brad says, I know there's lots of other stuff in the drink, but it's always surprising how you take all this orange stuff and throw it in a drink and it ends up looking like pineapple juice. Everything looks like pineapple juice. Um, also, interestingly enough, I do have pineapple juice around here somewhere uh, from last week. I just put it in a Bacardi bottle. And for some reason, this pineapple juice didn't start carbonating. And I'm very disappointed about that because I love the taste of car carbonated pineapple juice. Um, I did make some pineapple water, though. It's not in this cup, but I've been sipping three entire fifths. Uh, so actually, when uh, last week after we were done with the pineapple, I made some pineapple water by just throwing all the random pieces into water. And then now I have... I had three entire, like, liquor bottles full of just pineapple water. And so I drank through one of them yesterday. I drank through most of one today. We're going to take some on our trip tomorrow. It's incredibly pleasant. It's like pineapple juice, but not as sweet. I would highly recommend it for anybody who's trying to just get better ways to be hydrated and stuff, you know? Jasper says I'm potentially tasting completely different, too. That's a good point. What the heck does it taste like? How does it smell? Basil? I hardly know her. Only time I'm making that joke tonight. Also didn't have a place. Ooh. Ooh. That's so interesting. So it's it's very it's nice and sweet. It's very sweet and it's very bright. It's like a very it's a non-sour citrusy flavor to it. There's also something there that's reminding me of it's on the tip of my tongue and I don't quite remember what it is, but it's sort of it's a slightly poignant tanginess to it. And that could very well be the cantaloupe, uh, but I think it might be a characteristic of the wine that's pulling through. And the, what was the wine that I was using? It was a barefoot Pinot Grigio. So I'm getting like notes of like table grapes in there, green grapes. I'm getting notes of like a little bit of citrus, a little bit of citrus. I'm thinking a little more lemon, but also there's melon in there too. Lemon, melon, they're anagrams of each other. It's hilarious um, from a literary standpoint. But it's nice. This is a very, this is very, very pleasant to drink. And it's very light too, despite the fact that, you know, we had like chunks of melon and stuff in it. 
I also taste, say too, there's a there's a bubbliness to it that I really, really like. I don't think that's the wine. Might be the wine. Um, oh yeah, there's also, Spr oh duh, there's Sprite in there. That's what this reminds me of. This reminds me of some of the juices that we used to make over at my fraternity. Most of them was filled up to the brim with Sprite. Um, and various other things in there. That is a very nice combo. That's where those lemon uh, lime notes are coming from. That's really pleasant. Nice bubbliness, very well paired. It's just a slight bit of tang to it. And that there's, it's not super boozy, but you can taste the wine in there. Um, and I think that's kind of, instead of it being more a lemon lime, like acid type taste, it's a little more smoothed out. It's a little more frothy if I had to describe it. There's a certain acid that makes its way into wines and stuff. And I want to say it's that. Exactly what acid that is, I don't know. Might be lactic, might be malic. I'm not very up on my chemistry there. Um, but I was reading an article, it's like a week or two ago, about acid adjusting. And one of the things that you can do is you can like make an acid adjusted like champagne substitute. And not that that has anything to do with what we're doing right here, but my mind thought of it because in that same vein, I'll say there, there are also some chunks of cantaloupe still in here. And there's a lot of the, um, a lot of the, what do you call it? It's the pieces of the fruit that aren't the fruit itself. It's a little, the, the veins inside of the flesh. There's pieces of that in there too. I think that's where the, some of the texture is coming. It's almost, it's fuzzy in a way. It's a fuzzy kind of drink. It's a fuzzy kind of, it's melon magic. It's magic, damn it. Magic melon or melon magic. Oh, it's magic melon. It's not melon magic. It's not like, uh -huh, I cast melon magic upon you and turn you into a gourd. And then the gourd magic would turn you otherwise. Um, this is the magic melon. So um, I don't see what is so magical about this, um, except for the fact that there is a disproportionate amount of bubbles in the tip of the boot. I'd say that's pretty magical. Look at that. It's, so, <laughs> it's just so bubbly in there. I don't really know what that's about. Jasper says three primary acids are found in wine grapes, tartaric, malic, and citric. Tartaric, I think, was the other one there. I think when I was reading my the reading the note about the champagne adjusted champagne acid adjusted drink or whatever I think it was tartaric acid that you use and um, eventually I wound up getting into that that place because I want to play around with super juice which requires essentially taking constituent acids and putting them together for something that's a little more powerful than and a bit more health, uh, a bit more environmentally conscious than like squeezing lemons and squeezing limes I say hy uh, hypocritically because I'm going to be squeezing limes and um, might not be doing everything with them. I, I'll plan on freezing them. We'll figure out ways to use them later. But that's our melon magic. It is tart, just a little bit. It's a little bit tart. It's nice and sweet. Has those lemon lime notes that pair really, really well with the sweetness of the cantaloupe and they and the sort of I'm gonna take a guess the tartaricness of the white wine that you use, which is going to vary depending on what kind of white wine you use. I use the barefoot Pinot Grigio that's been sitting in my cupboard to be used for food and stuff. So your mileage may vary. Uh, but that's pretty good. And the aftertaste too. There is an interesting aftertaste here that I think is resulting from either the wine that's been sitting for a hot minute or maybe the, the Sprite that's also been sitting for a hot minute. Not incredibly pleasant to me, but it is kind of sour. It's like there is something resting on the back of my tongue and the roof of my mouth and it's a little, it's a little sticky, I will say. Which to me, I'm not really a big fan of, but other people are inclined. It's very sugary, it's very sugary, I will say. So let's put that off to the side. Magic melon. Um, I gotta, gotta prop this guy up so the basil leaf looks a little more obvious from a distance. Melon magic. Melon magic, he says. There we go. Bryce says, drink man, yum yum. Huh. I was gonna say, I was gonna say Mario Kart man, but he's also the chess man and a variety of other things too. Um, comma, yum yum yum, times three. Excellent. We made melon magic, magic melon and stuff. We, we've slaughtered at least one melon this evening. There are two more melons remaining. Technically the third one on the bottle, but you can't really slaughter a melon that's already been slaughtered. So we're gonna move on to something else afterwards. So I'll erase this from the board behind me. We make our way into the next segment. Our next victim is Robbie, the honeydew melon. There we go. Get you off of the board, do a little, do a little bit of cleanup over here. I realize some of my towels are made better than the other ones. It's actually quite impressive. Let's see. Pat says, probably the white wine. You technically shouldn't have that bottle open in more than a few days. Oh my. Well then, it's a good thing I'm only human. And humans make mistakes, right? That means we're totally forgiven over here. I'm sure, the, I'm sure that nature will forgive us for that. So the next thing that we're going to go into is we're going to utilize this little honeydew melon. 
who uh, I've aptly named Robbie. You know, they say if you name the animals before you slaughter them, it, it encourages a sense of feeling human, you know? You consider the consequences of your actions. I like to name all the fruits that happen here at the bar because it's an inside joke that lasted a perfectly long amount of time. Plus, I just think it's more funny when you slaughter things in the name of anything, really. So yeah, this cantaloupe's name is Robbie. Uh, Robbie's feeling a little, a little scared, to be honest. But today's the day, Robbie, and you're gonna go on a cocktail called She Only Wears Green, which features, among a, vi a variety of other things, honeydew melon juice. And um, how are we gonna juice the melon? Well, I mean, I think the idea is I'm gonna crush it up a bunch. Don't listen to this, Robbie. I'm going to crush up Robbie's insides a bit, and I'm gonna straight off all the solids until we just have the juice left over. We're gonna have a great time, little one. You know what? Let's let's make this even worse. You know, let's 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 put a little happy face on Ravi. Let's do that. Little 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 couple of eyebrows here. Actually, come on, come over here, buddy. Come over here, Ravi. Come on. We're gonna make you. We're gonna give you a nice face, right? Big old big old smile. Big old smile. He's got some teeth. Had some fights in school, so he's one of his teeth had chipped. You know, got a little nose. Um, I didn't even draw his eyes yet. Those are just eyebrows. There we go, buddy. This is Robbie. Robbie. And you're our next victim tonight. Let's get him. Execute him. The eyebrows are already a little pensive. Yeah, I would be so too if I was going to be sliced down the middle with a knife on television. Let's see, what do we call this? It's called She Only Wears Green. Why does she only wear green? Because it's in remembrance of Robbie. She only wears green. I feel like it's a song. Well, I did that wrong. Wears green. <laughs> She's actually just wearing the rind of Robbie. That's the implication here. I am metaphorically she in this case, and it's a metaphor, of course. Anyways, that's what Robbie's got in store for him today. There you go. So what we need to do is this is a cocktail from Imbibe Magazine, specifically utilizing that scarce resource that everybody loves and wants to get their hands on that is for some reason behind my Luxardo for some reason. Don't know why. Chartreuse. Got a chartreuse bottle. Shout out to my bro Brad out there, who's the only reason that this bar is even stocked with this. So I can thank you for Robbie's brutal and cold-blooded murder this evening. Thank you for that. It's going to be great. So let's see. What we need in this is we had to make something special for this one, actually. So in my fridge, uh, we have some cucumber simple syrup that was made from a cucumber, lo and behold, and other simple syrup. The ratio on this was better than the other one, so it's not as it's not as viscous as the one previously. But that that age-old combination of cucumber melon. I have had a number of different skincare products that I've tried at different uh, outlet malls throughout all of the United States, where I'd go in, put it a little bit on my hands, whether that be a sanitizer, a lotion, a face scrub, a little spritz of cologne and stuff. But like cucumber melon is a thing. And so this cocktail is cucumber melon and chartreuse and other things as well. We'll get to it. Just stick along for the ride and it'll be great. Um, essentially what we're doing, we're muddling some mint leaves to a shaker and we're muddling it. Uh, adding the rest of ingredients with ice, short whip, short whip shake, and then double strain over a pebble ice in a glass. That is the idea. Um, and, and evidently there's also instructions here on how to make cucumber simple syrup. Quite simply, all we did, and I'm thinking about maybe doing a video on it later to explain the process, but um, essentially all we did was we took some water, put some cucumber into it, we made cucumber water first, and then we added sugar to it. And that was pretty much it. And we, we made it into simple syrup using the normal uh, instructions and stuff. That's been pretty good. Disney Queen says, you drew on another melon? Of course I drew on the melon. I'm not going to eat the skin or anything. I want to feel like I'm killing something. My carnal desire is to kill. It's to kill. That's why I'm a carnivore. And the carnivore here is taking his anger out on this beautiful little piece of fruit here named Raleigh, who's missing a piece of his teeth and will soon be missing half of his face. There's no problems here. I don't have problems. I'm not stressed at work or anything. Anything. So let's split this guy open. We're going to need some melon juice. So the hardest part of this is going to be extracting the juice from the melon. So let me get my cutting board out again. Yeah, you knew it was coming, Robbie. There you go. Why don't you face the camera before we do the deed? There we go, bud. 
Should we say like a prayer or something before the dip? No, that's fine. Sorry, bud. It's just how it is. Hit him through the back. <laughs> Robbie's got a big old crack in the back now. That's hilarious. Now I'll do it in the front. There we go. And that's it. That's... <laughs> We've taken another life today, folks. I'm very happy about that. Oh, yes. And now I'm going to scoop out his insides, just like we did with the other guy. All aboard the murder train! Where's my kazoo? <laughs> now we'll scoop out his innards. I need my thing again. And the bucket. So we're essentially going to do the same process that we did previously. Um, with... God, I'm already remember... Uh, I'm already forgetting the name of the first victim we took this evening. It was Robert. This is Robbie? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not difficult. And we're just going to kind of go in there. We're just going to do a little bit of scoring around the sides. There we go. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I'm going to scoop our way in there. It's going to make a little bit of juice and stuff, but we're trying to get all the seeds out. There might be a way to utilize melon seeds. I am not aware of a good way to use melon seeds. If anybody has ideas or recommendations, if you've been there before, let me know. I'm curious. I'm always kind of curious to see, like, what are the ways that we can utilize the waste that we produce here? Just to be a little more mindful. We don't always have the time for it, and that's just something that, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly proud of. But you know what? It's just kind of a fact of life. Um, but when we can, we try to do good things. What part of uh, Robbie's face was this? I don't even know. There is nothing left of a face anymore. That's actually a little bit of melon juice in there. Oh, that was a seed. I thought that was a piece of melon. So let's actually start measuring this out, shall we? We need three quarters of an ounce of melon juice. So here is, uh, let's see, here's our, here we go. Let's see how much melon juice we got from this so far. Not at all much. Not at all much. So let's put you over here and grab the next piece of our adventure. Brad says, I think you can roast the seeds in the oven. That nah, makes a lot of sense there, Brad. It does indeed. That was my first thought. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, I feel like you can roast pretty much anything in the oven, seed-wise as well. I wonder if you can make like an orja out of this. That'd be so interesting. Things to explore at some point, right? Maybe one day when we get like a pizza oven back here, we'll do stuff like that. We'll get wild, dude. Wild, wacky, and wonderful. Sinful summer fun. Killing the melons. I'm gonna put this over the bucket. This is getting a little dirty. There we go. Doing a little bit of scrapage off screen. Promise. Promise everything's fine. You're not missing anything. Just some cookie sound effects. Here, you can have those too. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways. What kind of juice can we get from that? Let's see. A lot of juice? A lot of juice? Barely any juice at all. That's fine. So I think what we'll do next is, now that we have pieces of the melon here, I think what I'm going to do is, just like I did before, I'm going to cut off a kind of slice of the melon. Be very careful. Very, very careful. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Boop. Big old piece of the melon. I'm going to kind of shave off the sides and stuff. I'll put these guys in a plastic bag just so we can preserve it the stuff for later. I will probably be carving this thing at the end of stream after last call. That's a new thing that we're doing now, or sometimes when I feel like it. It's called last call. We're uh, no more cocktails. We sip in the cocktails. We talk about things, and um, I clean things up to make my job easier. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Let me clean this thing up a little bit. Yeah. There we go. We'll put the rest of Robbie over here. I'm a, I'm a very clean killer, just like Dexter. I, uh, I am very clean about it. Um, I'm going to, like, you know, you know, properly wrap up the bodies and dispose of them appropriately. You know, it's just a honor among serial killers, I suppose. Um, serial killers and melon killers alike. Oh, there's a little piece of his name tag. Bye-bye. What else do we have over here? Oh, there's the, his other name tag and a piece of his mouth. I also realized that I automatically assigned the name Robbie honeydew melon uh, is with he pronouns so I hope Robbie was okay with that far be it for me to assume things of a melon honeydew or otherwise there we go I got my rings on again I gotta put those things up to the side because it gets dirty and stuff all right let's see do I have any pieces of the skin over here I don't think I do so now there's a bunch of juice that we can harness from this I'm sure and so I think the best way of doing so is I'm just kind of gonna put it into a glass Put some pieces of it into a glass. Um, and I'm just going to squish it a bunch and see what kind of juice we can get out of it. And I'll just kind of strain it. 
We'll see how that goes. Some pieces of the melon are a lot thicker than the others, so how efficient this is going to be, I'm not exactly sure. We're going to try our damnest anyways. Let me grab one of our containers over here. I don't know how... I'm going to use a big one. I don't think we're using a lot of our stirring apparatuses, so I'll just take one of those guys and put them all on the inside. I'm going to do a little bit of muddling and stuff and see how much juice that we can extract. There we go. We'll see if this works. If it does, cool. If not, whatever. We tried. That's the whole point of this, is to explore. Take a muddler and get some juice out of these guys. And um, fix your angle, dude. Yeah, man. We'll try to see how much juice we can get in there. Squish. 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 I don't know if this is going to work. We'll try our damnedest. This is what we're doing. I can also blend it. I do have a blender that's accessible, but I feel like this is just going to be better. I just believe in this more. I believe in this so much more. I want to, at least. There's a piece of me that wants- Oh yeah, it's getting juicy in there. You just gotta be a little more aggressive with it. Not only did we completely heartlessly chop Robbie in half, but now we're mutilating the flesh of the fallen. It's awesome. It's American, right? That's that's what it that's what it's like to be American, let alone a Philadelphian, right? That's what it's all about. Somebody uh, not in America, tell me that's right. I just want external validation. This is a lot of effort. There's definitely pieces of this melon are, that are not as cooperable. I'm also currently working on my upper arm strength. I am not a very strong boy, but one day, with a proper workout mentality, we'll get there. And actually, you know what I can do now? I can use the power of my fists, because I can go get some cheesecloth. Let me go get some cheesecloth. I don't think I have any of that over here. I'll be back. Take a look at this thing. Let me go get some cheesecloth from my closet. Let me use that. Brad says, with the proper redemption of your channel points, Cameron can become a strong lad. It's true. Work that body. Work that. Oh, is this like foreshadowing? Oh, hello. Hello, well. Let me take this cheesecloth and kind of just like do a little folding of it, you know? Ooh. ooh. Spicy. No, never. Work in the body, fire hydrants. Yeah, that's the thing where like I'm trying to, as Anna told me, imagine like I'm pissing on a fire hydrant. This is not how I piss on fire hydrants. Imagine I was a dog though for a moment. Bark, this is how you would piss on fire hydrants. Um, okay, so I want to pour, I want to get all the solids out uh, and I want to conserve all the liquid that I have. So the first thing that I'll do as I switch legs is I'll put a little strainer over top of this guy just so I can start doing the hydrants in the other direction and see how much juice I can get out from just this. If it's enough, then awesome. There is a sizable amount of juice in there and a bit of stuff too. Oh, actually, this is perfect. I'll put a little bit more in there for our effort. All right, actually, I don't even need to do the cheesecloth thing. This is perfect. I also have some more, I, ha I have some more, um, what do you call them? Fire hydrants to do. So uh, I will continue doing that in the background. But yeah, that's what we got. And we have pieces of melon too. What are we going to do with those? Uh, I don't know yet. We'll put them in the... Ooh, excuse me. We'll put them in the bag with the rest of them. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll just put them in a separate bag. I'm not too worried about bags and stuff. There we go. We'll put you off to the side. We'll flip you over and... Try to figure out a use for you another time. I'll probably freeze these guys do a little puree. Do some smoothies and stuff. Excellent idea. Insane there's no dedicated fire hydrant cam. Unfortunate. It's just too much money. Actually, the cameras that I'm using now, one was a gift from my mother. That's that's that camera. And then this one here is just a spare cell phone. It's great. It's probably on the registry too, honestly. More cameras and stuff? No, I couldn't possibly ask the people of the world to fund literally my habit um, and not Anna's. That would just be, that'd just be explosive, maybe? I don't really know. I'd love it anyways. Let me put, uh, I'm probably gonna need to use this guy later. This little julep strainer. I only have one julep strainer. So what were we doing? Oh, we were we were getting caught up in mutilating a melon. Awesome. Well, let's get back to what we were doing, right? Honey melon juice, honeydew melon juice, fresh lime juice, cucumber simple syrup, and stuff like that. We need to put that all into a shaker, muddle lightly. I need a shaker. Cool. I don't need this. Let, let's take this honeydew melon juice, put it off to the side, right? Take this guy, put you down there. Take the knife. Actually, we'll need the knife in a hot second. Put my rings back on, putting everything back together. Um, so let's grab a shaker first. I'll just reuse the one that I had before because I did a nice cleaning of it. Put that in there. We need to put a bit of mint into it. 
How much mint exactly? Well, let's take a look at the instructions and tell ourselves. We require four to five mint leaves. So we're gonna take some, got some mint leaves back here. We're gonna take, we're gonna take some big ones, right? Here's the big one. Here's the big one. Here's it. Hello. They're big one. Let's go to another stock. Oh, it smells so lovely in here. Cause it smells like mint and that's appropriate cause mint stuff. Cucumber melon mint. It's basically like, this is like O2 hotel water. It's just all the things that you'd find. It'd be cucumber, mint, melon, all that stuff. Ooh, a couple of stragglers. Coolio. We might need this more. We'll need this more in the end. So what we'll do first is we'll do a little bit of muddling. Grab my muddler, which was kind of in the bucket. So we'll give that a little wipe off first. There's eau de rabi on it. We'll just do a light muddle. Just muddle lightly. We're just trying to, we're just trying to get them, just trying to get them to know each other. Just a little bit. Just bundle up a little bit. We're adding some more friends in there. Add the rest of the ingredients with ice. With ice, they say. Let's add our melon juice, which we worked so hard to receive. About three quarters of an ounce, about 22 milliliters of that. Then we need three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. Below, Roberta is limes. So there's a lime. Oh my God. That's what I get for putting Roberta in the fruits basket. We'll give a little bit of a cut there. Now let's do a, let's do that thing where you like, you squeeze it a little bit first to try to maximize the juicage. Very nice. Cut it. Now we'll juice it. Need three quarters of an ounce, so that's what we'll do. Of our lean juice. Lean juice. I mean, technically, Roberta is true. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no technicality about it. Roberta is fruit. Just a heaping fruit. A heaping large lady. Or lad. I don't know how Roberta identifies. Let's, let's ask. Roberta, how do, what are your pronouns? I know some people who vibe exactly like that. All right, we'll put this lemon guy. Pfft, lemon guy, what am I saying? It's not a lemon, damn it, it's a lime. Learn your citruses, dude, and I'll put that in a bag too. It's all about it's all about bags. That's my method this time. It's I'm optimizing on quick cleanup this time. I'll put the limes in the bag, and if I need the limes, I'll go back for them later. That's that's my workflow today. Plastic bags, so convenient. Love the modern age, and I can just throw it off to the side, and nobody would be none the wiser. Lime juice, very good. I think at this point in time, it's probably appropriate to grab some ice. So I'll do that. We'll grab one big cube, a couple little cubes into the big side. There we go. Now I can all y'all can see what's going on over there. Get with it, friends. Get with it. One, woo! One cube. Two little tiny cubes. Two little tiny cubes in a shaker. What does that make you and I? I wanna know what's in my shaker glass. We also need, we added the melon juice and the fresh lime juice. We need a half an ounce of a cucumber simple syrup. This is a rather complex drink here. The fact that we're even making it means that evidently I'm better than I was last year, which is great. So we only need a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of our cucumber simple syrup, which was made basically creating cucumber water and then adding sugar to it. It's, a, it's, it's really that simple and it does have a very light. Actually, no, no, no. It's it's a it's a potent because like cucumber itself is kind of a light flavor. It is a potent cucumber with the flavor being very noticeable. It's nice. It's a very. It's so pleasant. I never thought that you'd be using cucumber, like cucumber uh, syrup in a cocktail before. So I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta try that. Then we need to add. A half, oh, so let's let's do our gin first, actually. An uh, ounce and a half, or about 44 milliliters of gin. The gin that I've got on hand is our beef eater. I'm gonna go with that. Doesn't say specifically which kind of gin. I guess it doesn't really matter. So you need an ounce and a half of that, about 44 milliliters of that. Boop. There we go. And then finally, yes, finally, we had a quarter of an ounce, or about seven milliliters, of our green chartreuse. Getting hard to come by these days. I've seen a number of different videos about how to best replace the chartreuse. I even saw one video claiming that they cracked the code to do-it-yourself chartreuse. I've not had a chance to, to watch that one yet. Um, if I find it, I will link it in the Discord because I don't know where it is. There's nothing on here that denotes where the quarter of an ounce thing is. Huh, interesting. Guess I'm eyeballing it. Yep, that's fine. That's all right. I get a little too heavy on my pores. That's all right. I'm the one who's suffering. 
Anybody else who's a bar? The bar's always accepting uh, uh, guests, by the way. You can come by and stay with your friend. All right, that's all we need in there. So that's that. So now, we don't need to be looking at the shaker anymore. There's nothing really going on in there. We're just gonna shake this thing. It says a short whip shake. Short whip shake. I'm gonna see what that, I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try what it means to short whip shake. Um, exactly what that implies, I'm not exactly sure. But damn, I'm gonna give it a try. Let me wash out both sides of this. Oh, I can taste the chartreuse in that thing. I love it. Great. Brad says, it's a fun bar to drink at. So I've been told. And so Brad, and so Brad can attest to. Let's combine our liquids into solids. Give that thing a slap and we're gonna do a short whip shake. This is my whip. <laughs> this is my nanny shake. Just kidding. I don't really know. Um, whip shake. I've been working on this technique recently, so I'm gonna do it for a very short amount of time. And that's it. That's our short whip shake. That's all we're doing. That's what the instructions say. So that's what we're gonna go with. And now we just need to double strain over a pebble ice and a glass. I see here that it's a very tall glass. It doesn't look like you would need that big of a glass. The picture I have here is like a tall, like, bulbid Collins glass. I don't think we really need that. Uh, but we need it over pebble ice. I'm gonna grab an ice glass over here. I think that's gonna be good. And in place of pebble ice, I don't really have pebble ice. Actually, I do. I have an idea. I actually do have pebble ice. It's been sitting in the freezer downstairs, unused. Wait, I'm gonna go do that, because this is an excuse to use it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get the pebbles. It's not really pebbles. It's just really tiny cubes and stuff. Oh my god, it's so cool. And there's just a bit of it. There's a little bit of it. There's a little bit of it. I don't know where the rest of it went, but I got a little bit. So I'm just gonna use the rest of it. This is what we have here. I have this tiny little ice cube maker. It's got tiny little cubes in there. Um, and I, apparently, I think somebody's been getting my cube ice, but I'll just use whatever we have of it. It sounds so pleasant in the thing. I love it. Anyways, bye-bye. I'll clean that out too. I love doing that. It's so fun. And now I'm just gonna fill it up with, I guess the rest of the United States of America because we got some small stuff in there. It'll work out. I think the entire rest of the continental US is going in here. Uh, there goes, uh, it's a state. Here's another state. There's another state. There's another state. It's all the other ones. I'm just gonna fill this glass up with states. There goes Oklahoma, Iowa, Missouri, Indiana, Indiana. There we go. Uh, whatever's next to Indiana, Ohio, which is not what's next to Indiana. It's just what we had next. Just put a bunch of ice in it. Actually, you should be watching this. Was that Anna? Hi, Anna. Yeah, Anna popped by. She helped me out with the ice. He's very kind. She's been doing a lot of studying recently and we're very, very proud of her. Let me pop you back. Just a tad. There we go. And then we'll pour over top and garnish with some mint. Just putting as much stuff in here as possible. Look at that beautifully done piece of Michigan. That's great. Let's put in Louisiana. Huh. Anna? No, Louisiana. No, I didn't lose Anna. That'd be sad. And then the entire other part of it. I really think we're gonna, yeah, we're just gonna fit the entire rest of the continental US in here. There we go. Just just all in there. It's an all-American melon cocktail. There we go. Final state was Kentucky. Ta-da! Eh. Nice. All right, now let's pour it. We got a double strain over top, so. Because we got, got, got pieces of melon in there. We'll do one of those. Then we'll do one of these mess strainers here. And we'll see how that goes. Let's watch, watch the pour. Come back here. Watch the pour. Watch the pour. Hello there. You're a little bit closer. That sounds good to me. All right, we'll get this thing off and go for it. Oh, what a lovely color. What an absolutely lovely color. I love that. And you can, there's a couple of bits of the mint in there. I forgot that we actually added mint to the shaker. That's great. I love that. All right, we'll put you over here. Mm, lovely. And we'll garnish that with a bit of mint. I'll express that mint too. You, tip, use half of a cucumber for a subtle flavor or a whole cucumber for a more dominant cucumber flavor. Oh, for the cucumber simple syrup. That was the thing there. So evidently, this cocktail here is a kind of riff cross between a last word and a south side cocktail. The last word having a bit of maraschino and green chartreuse in it. A, la a south side, I don't actually know what a south side is. So uh, I'm, not really, I'm not really sure about that. Let me grab 
mint sprig. We'll kind of pop that in there, just right in the center. Just kind of float it right up on top. It's it's subtle. We don't we don't, I don't think we really need any more in there. That's so lovely. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. I like it from your guys' angle. I'm envious of your angle. That's really pretty. I love that very much. I love a south side. What is in a south side? Somebody has to educate me on that. Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna be the one who takes the photo this time. Because I love the way that looks from your angle. I love that very much. And I'll also take one from my angle too, naturally, naturally. Let me see. Oh, my phone's in my pocket. Here we go. Hello there. You pretty little thing. You pretty thing. Let me get a good... A little blurry. Trying my damnedest. There we go. Anyways. That's all the time I'll spend on that. We'll pop back over here. Do a tad bit of cleanup. As I take my reagents and put them into the bucket. Smells great in that shaker. I love the way that, that smells. That is so tantalizing. I love that very much. Put that down here. There we go. And the other half of it as well. All right, cool. Southside is kind of like, what if you want a mojito, but you don't like rum? Oh, all right. That's convenient. That's convenient. Southside, but no rum. I'm just gonna look that up real quick. It's for the sake of edumacation, you know? All right. A Southside, Southside cocktail. I'm gonna guess it's probably got mint and maybe vodka, mint and vodka. Southside cocktail, it is, according to liquor.com, mint leaves, lemon juice, gin, simple syrup. Ooh, that's according to that one at least. Very nice. I like the little, the, the mint aspect there. Mint and lemon, not something that I've tried before. No, no, just kidding. I've, I've definitely had lemonade with that stuff in it. So that makes a lot of sense. All right, so this is our this is called She Only Wears Green, and it is a cocktail from that I got from Imbibe Magazine, whose creator is Chicago-based bartender Jeremy Owen Barrett, uh, and it is a cross between the last word and the south side, self-described by Jeremy himself. It's a nod to Jaja's, Yaya or Jaja's lush greenery. The cocktail leans herbal, vegetal, with mint green chartreuse, cucumber, honeydew, and gin. It sounds tasty. Brad says the south side is also good with a little celery salt. That makes a lot of sense. I feel like the celery flavors with kind of like boost in a refreshing kind of way. So right off the top, obviously it smells like the garnish, but I'm getting a bit of those um getting a bit of those uh, honeydew notes in there. But it's very very st very very strong on the mint. It's got a nice cool to it. I love how what I can see right now is there's little bits of green kind of floating in it. That's definitely some of the uh, the mint that made its way through. I love the way that that tastes because I like the idea of having a little bit more green in my cocktails and stuff. So I'm I'm fine with that. Other people may not be as much. I'm taking a picture of that for my own preference, but I kind of like that. Wow, stop right there. There's a lot going on. There is so much going on in that right off the bat. Honeydew, mint, actually, right, 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 right at the front. Mint. Immediately from the mint, it goes into that lime juice. It's finishing right now with those more licorice -y notes of the chartreuse, which is excellent. It's, it blends super duper well with that kind of limeade kind of flavoring to this. And then like the honeydew, I mean, I really didn't get a good taste of the honeydew. Um, I will go back to, actually, let me take a piece of one of my, one of the pieces that we cut off. Take a big, big old piece of it. very light. The honeydew flavor is very, very light there. Not super potent, not super sweet. Not, not really getting the, not really getting the honeydew. Not really. I mean, there is a certain sweetness that is accompanying the mint. Like in the very, very beginning, it is that mint air. It is refreshing. It is cool. And then it blends into this combination of Tart, sweet stuff, which I believe includes that melon there, the the honeydew there, the lime, the, the lime that's in there, as well as any sort of residual sweet notes from the chartreuse, those more like more botanical notes. And there's like a, a booziness to it that is definitely being accompanied by the gin. It is very, very vegetal. And then it ends with those sort of anise licorice notes from the chartreuse, which is incredibly pleasant. I love the aftertaste of this. 
This is delightful. And of course, I forgot too, there's also the cucumber syrup in, uh, the cucumber syrup in there as well, which I think adds that sort of very refreshing, very airy, kind of almost watery, but not so watery note to it. I feel like eating a cucumber or like adding cucumber to stuff is almost like adding ice to something without actually cooling it down. It is cooling, kind of like how mint is. A cucumber and a little bit of a different one. More on the vegetal side, more so than the herbal side of things. Brad said there's a lot of strong flavors in there, and honeydew isn't a heavy lifting melon. No, no, not really. It certainly doesn't do a lot of... It's interesting how the color has been so heavily influenced by it. I mean, granted, the green chartreuse comes in with its own blend of green, but then I think the other piece there is a little bit from the lime juice, which is kind of green. Little teeny, teeny, tiny bit from the cucumber simple syrup there, and I think most of that comes from the, 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 um, the honeydew juice was a very nice, like, opaque neon green. Not neon like shining, but just like a like a, a prominent type of green. And it looks really cool. This is this is great. This is beautiful tasting. I think my favorite parts about that is just the way the mint and the lime blend well together. It's very it's mojito it's mojito like. I think it's it's very, very mojito like, but there's other notes there that are just so pleasant, especially at the chartreuse at the end. That totally makes that worth it. One of the things that I've been considering, my mind is finally beginning to conceptualize how different spirits and stuff combine together. And one of the things that got me was that I wondered if, let's say, a drink or substance out there has an aftertaste that is very, very potent that I either like or dislike. If I put that into a drink with other constituents that don't impart a lot of their own aftertaste, I wonder if that aftertaste is going to be dominated by that thing that already has a potent aftertaste in it. Like for example, if you have um, four different lanes and you're adding them all together and one lane is aftertaste, if there's nothing else in the aftertaste lane except for from one spirit, is the aftertaste, is the, uh, the, um, the aftertaste totally dominated by that spirit that you add to it? I don't really know. I haven't done enough comp uh, experimentation to, to know or not yet, but um, evidently that chartreuse aftertaste, even though there was only a little bit in there, is prominent enough to be noticeable at the end. And I like that a lot. It's definitely on the sour side. I will mind, I will mind that. But it's so pleasant in that way. Let me grab myself a coaster from over here. That was, she only wears green. That she does. Evidently inspired by Yaya, Jaja. I don't, I don't know exactly what that is. But to whatever, to whatever or whoever Jaja is, I respect Jeremy and his decision there. That was good. Very, very tasty. And it allowed us to kill yet another melon. There's another melon gone. There's only two melons that remain, and really one of them wasn't there to begin with. It's just a bottle of Midori. We're doing all the hard stuff first and whatnot, you know? Um, so we're moving on to a different melon this time. So far we have covered the cantaloupe. Cantaloupe's name was Robert. We've covered the honeydew. The honeydew melon's name was Robbie. And now we move on to Roberta, the watermelon, because uh, well, they're all gonna go tonight, and they're all gonna be chopped up and stuff, and eventually served to friends on the beach. That's the idea, at least. My outfit this evening was inspired by the watermelon. It's a, it's a little bit red. It's a little bit red. It's also kind of green. I'm totally clashing, and I am totally aware of it. Let me do a little bit of transitioning as we move on. The next cocktail of the evening. Does she only wear green though? Well, my first impression of the cocktail is very green. So, um, if I had to guess, if this is my only impression. And she did only wear green because she really only wore things once, which I guess can be taken in a number of different ways, but we'll push that aside for now. So let's see, what's the next cocktail I got for you all this evening? The next cocktail that we got is one called Heat Exchange, and Heat Exchange comes from the New Deal Distillery, and I believe the idea is they were, oh, I thought perhaps New Deal Distillery was going to add what are their own ingredients in here? Portland 90 Vodka. Maybe that's maybe that's what New Deal Distillery does. I don't have Portland 90 Vodka. I just have other vodka. Maybe we'll use the Tito's. Maybe we'll use something else. But the Heat Exchange cocktail, it just kind of, it's a very watermelon-based one. I thought maybe there might be a story behind it. And if I had to kind of come up with a story on my own, I think that it's kind of representative of the summer. 
I think of like, when I think of a lot of summer times, it's very watermelon forward. There's always like people serving watermelon and stuff at like summer barbecues and whatnot. Um, and like days by the pool. And I love those times. I, I feel like I feel like I have distinct memories somewhere inside of me of like walking around the deck with my floaties on as a child and like stumbling over to like the watermelon thing and just making an absolute mess of my face. It just feels very summery to me. And there was that one Rugrats episode that made you think that if you swallowed a watermelon seed, it would grow inside of your stomach. and. My logical conclusion was that you would explode, and the idea of exploding babies was not, or rather exploding toddlers, was not something that sat well with me as a child. Um, and then I found out that, I mean, at least in most cases, you can eat the seeds of a watermelon, and there's no problems with that. Or you can spit them at your friends, or be the jackass like I was and spit them into the pool, and then people are like, ew, it's bugs! It's not bugs, it's just watermelon seeds, and I'm just the jackass 12-year-old who's just trying to have a good time. This one is called Heat Exchange, and it is from New Deal Distillery, advertising their Portland 90 vodka, which we don't have, because I don't know where New Deal. I don't know where New Deal Distillery is. New Deal Distillery, if you're out there, you would like to send me a bottle of your Portland 90 uh, bottle. I'll just be thankful for it. Heat Exchange, and even if you don't want to send it to me, maybe you'll come across in my travels one day, and I'll just utilize it anyway. Who knows, dude? Who knows? Heat Exchange. Another piece of me wants to insert my own analogy here about like, I don't know, Newton's laws of thermodynamics and stuff. Um, but that's, I don't want to think about the college days. I don't really want to think about mathematics at all. Being the watermelon killer I am, I just want to focus on my next victim. And my next victim is you. Hello, Roberta. Hello there, you. you're a big old watermelon. I draw a face on you too, but something about that feels a little disingenuous. Jasper says, one rabbit hole after, and apparently cucumbers are in the melon family and are distantly related to the melons used so far. That's the reason behind the cucumber melon conspiracy theory. I've been telling you guys, melon on the inside, right? Look inside of the melon, go back, rewind the stream a little bit, rewind the VOD. You'll see that there are seeds on the inside of that. Open up a cucumber, actually I'll show you. I have a cucumber. It's not a coincidence. Look at this, look at this. Whoa, hello. Check this out, look at this. You see those seeds in there? You see that? There are seeds inside of Robbie. There were seeds inside of the other one, but like right in the center, except this is edible. Just like Roberta. It's not a coincidence. If it's a coincidence, I'll take a munch of this cucumber, which I kind of want to do anyways, to be honest. I'll put that over here, just in case somebody tempts me to do so. In any case, we need to kill another, we need to kill another watermelon. This one. This is going to be the one. So we need to wa muddle watermelon and mint in simple syrup. So those are all the things that we're muddling together. And it says we put it in a, a tin and we whip shake, which I guess is a term that I'm going to have to become familiar now with. Um, I forget. Do I, do I remember what my... I forgot what my keyboard combination was for my browser angle. Where are you? I don't know. It's okay. That's not the purpose of this right now. Brad says the cucumbers are good. A little salt, a little black pepper. You got a snack. Oh, I just love eating, snacking on those things raw. Either there's something wrong with me I'm, or I'm very particular or maybe a combination of both. There's nothing wrong with anybody, really. We want to cut this thing. We're, metal, we're muddling the pieces of the melon. That's what we're doing. And apparently we need one small piece of watermelon. And so I think as we're cutting the watermelons, we might as well just do this the way that I, I suppose the world intended us to. And to be honest, I don't really know the best way to cut a watermelon. Um, I'm going to cut off a piece of it, then cut off a wedge of it, and then we'll figure out the rest of that stuff later. Um, but for now, we're just going to do this the easy way, which is just as much effort as we need to get things going. And you are making it very difficult to put... <clears throat> Make the entire place shake for a little bit. Roberta, here we go. By the way, any likeness to people in the real world who may be named Robbie, Robert, or Roberta, this has nothing to do with you, I promise. There are no analogies here. I just like murdering fruits. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna get one big slice. I'll cut it into fours and that's all we're gonna do here. I'll put it in the rest in the plastic bags and stuff. Here we go. A little more difficult than our other friends. But somebody's gotta do it. I might have to actually flip you over a little bit, make this a little bit easier. There we go. Go get them! I love these sounds. I love the sounds of this thing just like ripping apart. 
There we go. And that's all we need. Ooh, don't hit the microphone. There we go. Hello, buddy. There we go. Big Berta. <laughs> My God. A rather large Berta indeed. Look at that. And it's juicy. Very juicy Berta. Got to remove my rings for this one. I'll just put it in my pocket this time. It just makes things easy. We need, effectively, a single slice, single wedge of watermelon. I will prepare my Ziploc bag for one side of the watermelon. And this side. We'll save that for later. We'll cut this up into wedges and stuff. Maybe pieces. We'll deal with it later. Honestly, this thing is so damn big, I'm going to need two Ziploc bags for it. So uh, that's just what we're gonna work with. I'm gonna go back through all the stuff that I'm throwing in Ziploc bags at the end. I'm gonna do a segment this evening called Last Call where we're just gonna sip on our cocktails and chill out and cut up some fruit and stuff. If you wanna stick around for it, feel free to do so. Uh, I love the company. And if you got other things, no big. And now let's try to get a sl another slice from this thing off. I don't really like the angle that this thing is at and there might be a little bit, there might be a better way. There might be a better way, but this is all I have, so. Remember, at the very least, if something happens, we caught it live on camera. Maybe I just stabbed the thing, right? That's an idea. Oh yeah, that's that's a great idea. There we go. And just like, pour it off to the side. <laughs> this thing is getting a little, ooh, there we go. Cut a little off the side so you have a stable butt to cut from. Ooh, that's a great idea. Great idea. That is an excellent idea. I love that. This is what we get when we think together. Or I have people who are significantly more experienced in my life. Oh my God, that was satisfying. There we go. What an excellent idea. I love that. You might have saved one of my fingers there, Brad. And for that, I am eternally grateful. There we go. That was so much easier. Somebody's experience with cutting watermelon. Or at least he's doing a great job pretending that he is. Now I'll put the other half of that in another Ziploc bag completely. Nice. Y'all are helping me out with my weekend plans here. I greatly appreciate that. Let's put you in here. There we go. Big old Ziploc bags, gallon size Ziploc bags. That's how you cut anything around. Make one face of it flat. See, see now, now you're starting to sound like a mathematician. Oh. God, y'all are so smart out there. I wish I were smart. I am smart in my own special way. Just like everybody else out there is smart in their own special way. I think, in my opinion, philosophy, that smarts is how you apply the knowledge that you have. It's not about how much knowledge you have. It's about how you apply it. That's my opinion. So let's cut up a couple of, couple of wedges of this guy. Um, I'm gonna do it a different way. Go. There we go. We got a couple of slices of watermelon. That's great. Everyone's smart. What are you doing with that? What are you doing with that watermelon? I'm gonna cut it into a wedge and then I'm gonna muddle one of those wedges into into a shaker. This is the wedge that I'm going to keep in the shaker. This is the wedge that we're gonna keep for a garnish. All the other wedges we're gonna put in a bag. I'm gonna do the bag that the smaller half was in, and then we'll do something else. Eventually, what I'll be doing with the watermelon is eating it with friends on the beach. That's the weekend plans. Uh, you're gonna be the guy that I use for a garnish, actually. Oh, actually, I'm gonna eat you. Yeah, you're sticking around, bud. There we go. That is wonderful. Top all those guys off. You're gonna have to cut that big one, then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I plan to. I'm gonna cut all these. I'm gonna cut all these fruits there, dearest. You promise me that. You're right my word. Oh, I can't even see all the melons. There's all the melons. If y'all can't, by the way, if y'all can't see anything, I'm dense. Just remind me. I'm gonna have a moment with this. Oh, no, no, no. Let's not get distracted. Our turner's gotta do his job. Let's make a drink. Let's grab a shake. Oh, not like that. There we go. I got it. Shake of things over here. On one side, we're going to add the meat from one of our watermelon slices. It'll be this guy. And I'll cut up into manageable bits. And I'll put it on the inside of the thing here. And we'll muddle it. The rest of this is going in my mouth. 
Cam is the melon lord. Today I am. I do be snacking it. Put you over here. And then your scraps. Mm -hmm. You can go. Here. You need to be washed down. Goodness gracious. Into the bucket. Into the bucket you go. There. No, I'll put you over here. You're fine. I rarely snack on these streams. This is an honor. All right. So now, we got our melon in there. We also need to add six mint leaves, specifically. Make it specifically six mint leaves. We're gonna add six mint leaves. Because who are we to question the book that tells us how to make the recipe? I'm gonna try to get some big ones in here. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, un, uh, y, uh, siete. For good luck. I don't know how to say for good luck in Spanish. I inserted whatever I could. The limited amount of knowledge that I have. Oh, and I can put my rings back on because I guess I'm kind of clean now. Clean as I'll ever be. So now we got all that in there. Gotta get my muddler. Sitting at the bottom of the bucket again because I only have one muddler. I usually don't do much muddling. Definitely should have thought about that before walking into a melons stream. That would have made more sense. There we go. I'll put this thing in our cover here too. Right, so I don't know much Spanish, but that one I do know. Buena suerte. Good luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Buena suerte. Like, good luck. I remember that. All right, see that? Let's muddle it. Does it say to muddle it? Oh, I have to muddle it in the simple syrup. Half an ounce of that. Let's go get that simple syrup. It's, uh, it's very syrupy. It is definitely more syrup than it is simple. So uh, I'm going to try my best to... I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to eyeball it. Because I really don't think it's going to do too much. And I just see that as it just glosses over everything. Yeah, I'd say that, whoop, there was a big chunk that went in there, so it's getting very, ooh, there's a piece of, there you go, pal. Yep, you're just, you're going, you're going away now. Yep, you've lost your privileges. You're going away. My butt, Yeah, I think I made that way too thick. Actually, I can just reheat that. I don't even have to waste it. Now we'll muddle. Conduct the muddleage. It's kind of like pancake syrup in the best of ways. Yeah, I can see, yeah, it totally is. And I bet if I put it on, like, warm, hot flapjacks, then it'll probably be even better there. So yeah, I'm muddling the shit out of this thing. Add vodka, vermouth, lime juice, and otherwise. So another thing, another point here. This thing is calling for Dolan Blanc Vermouth. And it wasn't able to find Blanc Vermouth today. It was very, very, very busy this week in preparation for our little trip. So, I don't have Blanc Vermouth, so I'm going to use dry vermouth here. Specifically Dolan as well. However... I did, do, I did try to do a little bit of research of what Blanc Vermouth would bring to the table, aside from the dry vermouth that I'm going to be using. Evidently, Blanc Vermouths are similar to dry vermouths, but are, are a little less sugary. So there's a little less sweet. I think the scale of sweetness goes from like sweet vermouth to dry vermouth to Blanc Vermouth. At least that was according to one article on the internet. Whether that's true or not, beyond the scope of this tutorial. Maybe one day we'll do a whole thing on vermouths and stuff. There's plenty of different types out there. So now we need to add the rest of our constituents, right? We'll just do that over here. And I'll put some ice in this other side of the shaker as we continue things forward. Let me bring things a little bit closer so we can kind of see things that are going on over here. Actually, one of the things that I'm kind of playing around with over here is I'm considering just making the main view. I, I, I'm open to anybody's thoughts on this. How does this look over here, like with the dude in the corner, as opposed to the other way around, like over here? Like, I'm curious from people who are out there already, is it more fun to watch the drinks like this being made? Or if it's more fun to watch them like this, all up close and personal, I'm inclined to think this way is probably the best. But I don't know. I'm open to everybody else's thoughts there. I assume whatever's easiest is just fine. Um, let me go get vodka and our vermouth. I'm going to use... New Deal Distillery is advertising their own vodka. I don't have their vodka, but I'll just use one of the local ones I have, this Union Forge over here, which is from... I don't exactly remember, but I'm gonna use it anyway. I'll take a look at this. There we go. Got my Doolin. My Doolin there. My Union Forge. So Union Forge here is from Pennsylvania. Vodka, family owned, union made. Yeah, that's what it's all about. We support our unions. We support our we support our folks out there striking right now. That's what it's all about. Let me 
add, we're gonna add a full ounce of our vodka. Oops, I hear there was a little bit of liquid in that guy. Whoopsie. So we'll add a full ounce or about 30 milliliters of vodka. Much to the brim as we can. There's a lot of liquid in here already, so I don't know exactly how this is gonna play out because your mileage is gonna vary depending on what you consider to be a small piece of watermelon. Then we're gonna add a full ounce, 30 milliliters of, if you have Dolan Blanc Vermouth, use that. Um, oh, actually I don't have Dolan. I thought I had Dolan. Uh, I'm using Gnarly Pratt. That's what I'm using. If you had a Blanc, I do not have Blanc. I have dry vermouths of two different kinds. So that's what I'm going to use here. It's gonna be a little different, but this is what we have. So this is what we're going to use and we're gonna see what happens. I'll put that guy back in the fridge. Next, we're gonna need lime juice. Uh, and that's it. Vodka, vermouth, lime juice, and ice. So we're just gonna get some lime juice afterwards as well. I do have one of my limes over here. It's not completely juicy, so we're gonna do that. And I feel like there was something else I needed to grab from the fridge over there, and I completely forgot what it was. All right, so here's another half of one of my limes. Oh, you can't see that. What? There you are. Another half of one of the limes here. I'll grab my squeezer. I'm gonna do this again. There we go. Let's see how much juice we can get out of that lime. I already kind of did that little massaging technique. We'll see if that helps. I actually, from the streams of the past, there are frozen lemons and limes in my refrigerator. Frozen lemons, no limes yet, in my freezer, because I hope to be able to do something with the scraps at some point. But I haven't quite gotten there yet. So some more scraps we'll add to our scrap bag. I like that, scrap bag. Love the idea of that. Oh, and I need another lime. And it's a lot easier to get the limes now that Roberta is no longer in the fruit basket. That's unfortunate for Roberta. Let's just cut this lime. I'll do a little massage technique first. Get in there, get in, the sh get in their shoulders. How is work today? A little stressed out? That's all right. It's all right, just, just, just let it out. Deep breath in, deep breath out, and we'll work out all the tension that you've been building up. Miss Lime. Miss and or Mr. Lime. Nice. All right, and we'll try to get the rest of the ounce out of that. And those are the rest of our ounce. Very lime heavy on these melon cocktails, so evidently there's something there. There's something, I feel like there's something significant about that. The fact that everybody wants to use the lime juice here and nobody gonna wanna use the lemon juice because I don't think any of these cocktails call for lemon juice this evening. Very interesting. Usually lemon juice is the one that kind of like rules the crowd, but maybe the whole like idea of the melon color being green is kind of seeping its way unconsciously into the mind of the bartenders who created all these drinks and stuff. And that's all we needed in there. We have our vodka, our vermouth, blanc vermouth if you have it. I'm using a dry here because that was what was available. Lime juice, simple syrup, piece of watermelon, mint leaves, and finally at the end we'll use some soda water, but not quite yet. All of our constituents are in there. I'm gonna go grab some ice and we'll do some shaking. There's a lot of stuff in there. So I think I'm just gonna do a big, big ice cube here because um, after, I don't remember who it was from last week, um, but they reminded me that dilution can be very important uh, when you're dealing with different types of cocktails and stuff. So if you wanna control the dilution, you can use a bigger ice cube here. And because there's just already a lot of liquid and stuff in there from the watermelon, I don't really wanna dilute this more than we actually have to. Using a little bit of logic there, putting things together, or at least trying to, he says. So now we'll take our liquids and we'll put them into the solids, even though there's no really telling the difference between these guys anyways, and we'll uh, we'll give this guy a shake. We'll go back to this angle and see what happens. This is a longer shaker, so actually this is even more, this is, requires a little bit more effort to actually like shake things around. Uh, it said that I was supposed to whip shake it. I don't know if this is the whip shake or not, but I'm gonna keep on going until this thing is nice and icy cold. It's actually kind of slipping out of my hands a little bit. God, I gotta work on that. That's why I'm working on my upper arm techniques now because <laughs> If you're doing it right, I feel like if you're doing it right, you're working up a sweat. There we go. Come on, my guy. There we go. And we are going to add soda water to the tin. Interesting. And then double strain into a Collins glass. Top with fresh ice, garnished with watermelon and mint. I need to get my mint back out again. 
Let's switch things over. We'll grab Colin's glass or something similar to one. There's a tall, tall boy. Tall boy glass. We're gonna use tall boy glass. Come back here. Whew, I am a little winded from that. Wowza. That was excellent. That is exactly the kind of thing that I want to be doing on Wednesday nights. Seriously, though. Because this means that we're all improving. I just need a little bit of a water break as I adjust the angle. Phew! See, I'm the lucky one here. Because if I were an actual bartender in a bar, those little, those little moments of solace, hard to come by. Massive respect for people out there in the industry. Whew! Okay. I need, to, I need some mint. I'm gonna get some more mint from the fridge. Ow. This is whacking his hand. We're gonna garnish with our watermelon. And we're gonna add a bit of club soda to our shaker tin before pouring over. So let me grab what's remaining of, it says one and a half ounces of our soda water. So let's do that, right? One and a half ounces or about whew, 44 milliliters of club soda into the shaker tin and then we double strain out. That is the idea. So let's do that. Let me grab this guy over here, put him over the top, and we want to strain this over, double strain into a Collins glass top with fresh ice. So we're not str straining it over ice, that'll come after this. I grab my other strainer over here, a lot of particulates and stuff, so that is the plan. And we'll go like that. Plenty of liquid here. There was so much from that watermelon, it only makes sense. That is a lovely, lovely, lovely red color to it. Give a little shake. Try to get all that liquid out in there. There we go. Just needed a little bit of convincing. And a little bit of patience, too. Wow, look at that watermelony color. That's definitely the vermouth. The vermouth is really the main source of color here. And the addition of the Midori as well, really contributing to that red color. <laughs> Silly, there's no Midori in this. None of no Midori. You silly, silly number. Now we'll top that off with ice. And then we'll garnish. I'm just gonna kinda add some ice cubes and stuff in there until it looks like we don't need to add any more. Heat exchange. That's the name of this cocktail. There we go. I could use one more in there. There. No. Nope. Okay. Nah, we're going for it. Yep, we're totally going for it. Now we'll garnish it with the watermelon. And the lily leaves. Let's go into our leaf thing over here. Let's get a bit of a better. There we go. I feel like that's a little bit better. We'll get a sprig of mint leaves. I feel like we don't need too much of it. There have been a couple of really nice sprigs in this patch, this little pouch here. So we'll put one guy, let's put the watermelon on first because that's gonna be like the star of our show here. Um, let's see. The idea that I have is scoring it to the side like that so that I can sit on the side of the glass like so. There we go. Love it. <laughs> That's a comically large size of watermelon. Oh my god, I love that. Wedged in between the- that needs more mints. That needs more mints. I'd also need to slap it too. I'm gonna slap it as well. That's a good idea. There we go. Just join, join your friend in there. Just, just go for it. Be unapologetically bombastic and flamboyant this summer. That's the idea. That is indeed the idea. Lovely. Look at you there looking all nice. Prepped and ready for the summer. That's what he looks like. I like the way that that looks. Very nice. You present yourself very well there, uh, Monsieur Heat Exchange. You're kind of dripping a little bit, but that's that's chill. Let me take a quick pick from back here. A little bit of a number on that basil work there. Wow, that's awesome. My lighting is definitely not the best for this, but we got it. That garnish is ridiculous, and I love it. This is what it's all about. This is the kind of energy I want from the summer. Oh, also, you're kind of, you're kind of dripping. <laughs> so let me, <laughs> you're dripping there, sir. Let me, let me top you off. Oh my goodness. All right, all right, let's bring it over. 
That's definitely gonna need a straw too. Let me grab another one of these. This one, this this one's bombastic. I I gotta do that. I gotta do the gold straw for this guy. Gotta do the gold straw. This is delightful. What a vibe. And it's also it's a little top heavy on the other side. So <laughs> so this is a really <laughs> Roberta's really doing a number on this this one here. So let's see. Right off the bat, I'm getting notes of mint and watermelon, and I honestly could not have any more idea, any clearer an idea of why. Um, it's because it, that's the garnish there. Jasper saying, way to put the tip of your mouth on the camera. The cocktail angle is exactly what it sounds like. Just, just break that break that down. Cocktail angle. Think about it. As we take a sip of this heat exchange drink, which I think has had finally had a chance to kind of like cool down a little bit. Oh, wow. Hmm. Oh, that is so tasty. Wow. There is a lot of watermelon juice in there and you can totally clearly taste it. That is so interesting. It starts off with very unapologetically like you just bit into a watermelon with a little bit of that mint, just a little bit. It goes into a more like sourish phase that really brings forth the flavor of the lime juice there but then like there's a bunch of other there's a bunch of other stuff that happens in between right after the watermelon hit there's that little bit of there's there's a, um oh there's like a tartness there that is not the lime juice and i want to say it is most definitely the vermouth that we added in there and i kind of uh i kind of want to taste to double check that that is very very tasty that's our that's our noily prime and only prep vermouth in there. What else do we have? Vodka to kind of ampli am amplify the booze effects. Our simple syrup, our watermelon, the mint leaves. Yeah, there were mint leaves in there too. There's definitely a minty aspect as well. But I think that's playing around very nicely with that vermouth, which I want to take a closer taste of now and see like what notes I'm picking out there. Because I it's it's prevalent in there. I can definitely taste something else in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's so pleasant. Wow. I love that. I like that better than I like Martini and Rossi. It's almost, if you imagine lemon lime soda, like Sprite, but also kind of ginger ale, this vermouth almost tastes like ginger ale, specifically like Canada Dry, but a bit more, a bit more acetic, a bit more vinegary, uh, and like l significantly less sweetness. It's like you completely flattened out some ginger ale and you took away a lot of sweetness from it, like a Canada Dry, I think. But I guess Canada Dry, Canada Dry is not a thing. No, 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 Sierra Mist is not a thing anymore. Starry has taken over Sierra Mist. Not Sierra Mist, Canada Dry. It's good. I like that vermouth. That was a very good vermouth choice in there. And then combined here, I can get that. Now, actually, there's even, there's a, there's a spicy note on my tongue at the very end. And there was something else that was happening at the as the drink kind of evolved a little bit toward the very end. Watermelon, watermelon mint. The vermouth. There's a little bit of that like, it's not quite, it's not quite sour. Like there's sourness from the lime juice, but there is a almost like sparky note. I can describe it as kind of sparky. It's potent. It's pointy. It's a pointy flavor that I can't quite describe otherwise that is sticking around towards the very end. And what lays as the aftertaste there is very, very light. It's mostly the watermelon. It's, it kind of leads with watermelon and it kind of backs off with watermelon too, as if you were taking a big old gulp of like, let's say watermelon juice. And not the stuff that you buy at the store that's like heavily sweetened. I'm talking like you blended a watermelon and it's basically water now. You've taken out the melon from the watermelon. You've got the water remaining and whatever bits of personality the melon part left behind. That's what I that's what I got here. This is so pleasantly mixed too. This is very, it's complex in a way that is really, really enjoyable, but it's but it's simple too. Like to, to the un to the untrained palate, it's a it's a different kind of watermelon and mint. Which I really, really like. It's very, very refreshing. I'd say even this has the same kind of refreshing component as this, uh, as the she only wears green did. And I think that's just because of the presence of the lime juice there. And as I go back and taste, a lot more, a lot more airy, much more minty. Um, the lime juice has faded a lot. It's not as tart. This is more tart than this guy is. And then our, what was it? Magic melon, which has, as I expected, 
completely separated now, as I'll, as I'll show y'all. There is so much of that deep orange color on the bottom because it's all the pulp and stuff that is just kind of like falling. And it's a little bit lighter up on the top. And if I take a sip of it, I'm gonna get all that pulp in the bottom. So mix it up a little bit. Not as cool. Very, very, um, what was in that? What the heck was in the magic melon? Oh, it was the wine. It was the wine. I can really taste the Pinot Grigio now. It's gotten more sweet. It's kind of, it's, it's warmed up significantly. So I'm not exactly surprised either. That tastes really good. That's like drinking, that's like drinking like, um, like melonish, melonish, specifically cantaloupe melon, like wine that's been sitting out for a little while. I'm even getting like a note there that almost feels mango-y. Mmm, very interesting. Uh, but that was a different cocktail. This one is heat exchange. That's very pleasant. It's like, it's like sour watermelon mint. Sour watermelon mint with booze in it. Vodka and vermouth. And I like that very much. Still kind of on the sour side though. So we'll get myself a little coaster behind my water thing. I'll put you over here. You can hang out with Pikachu now that I've stolen literally everything else from you. Oh, actually, I should put a bigger... <laughs> I should put a little paper towel before below this one too because a little leaky. That's what you, you, when you, when you leak all over the bar, you get a diaper. You get a cocktail diaper. Put a little thing on you. There we go. Get a cut little fold. You have to do the diaper folding technique too. I'm gonna pop you over here. There we go. You, you have fun over there. Y'all, uh, y'all have fun. Not too much fun. There we go. All right. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Excuse me. So, We've completely eviscerated all the melons that we had planned for this evening. There is no other melons left to kill, to eviscerate, to slice in half, to gut in a way. Um, we've killed Robert, the cantaloupe, Robbie, the honeydew, and Roberta, the watermelon. Um, and it's wonderful. Robert became magic melon. Robbie became she only wears green. And Roberta became heat exchange. But now we move on to other things, right? We don't really have much melon left to speak of. And that's rather unfortunate. But there's other melons, right? When I think of cocktails and stuff, I think of like cocktails and melon. My mind kind of goes to this little bottle of green stuff here. It's called Midori. It is apparently infused with Japanese melons. Japanese melons, I think, I, I feel like I've seen a lot of anime and video games that depict melons like this. Maybe that's kind of what those Japanese melons look like. Cause that's not, that's kind of cantaloupe, cantaloupe but like it's very unripe cantaloupe. And maybe, I don't know, I don't know too much about it. One day, I hope to go to Japan uh, so that I can observe, uh, well, Anna wants to go because Tokyo Disney. Um, I want to go just because I, I like traveling places. Traveling places sounds fun, you know? But so we'll move on to something that's Midori oriented. A different type of melon entirely. Disney, says Anna. Correct says Cameron. Excuse me. And we'll make our way into this next segment with something rather simple. The simple thing, the simple thing that I have in mind is a shot. A shot that you might be interested in using either while you're at the bar or just kind of hanging on your own and getting yourself ready for the night. And it involves quite simply e mixing equal parts of Midori melon liqueur with... I'm trying to find my peach schnapps. Which peach schnapps? And it is called the Jolly Rancher Shot. You just kind of mix the two together. So that, that's what we have next. It's a Jolly Rancher shot. Now, I have to remember who it was. So it was my, it was, a uh, who sent that to me? One of my close friends, shout out to my girl Anjali, sent me this recipe here from Tickety Talk. And I got to see who was the person who came up with this. So I'm gonna real quickly go to my little source here, open up my Tickety Talk app and see what's happening there. And it doesn't look like, it does not look like it wants to open up in the app. So I can't remember what creator actually was in charge of this one, but they're out there somewhere. And uh, if you did it, thank you. I wanna say it was, I feel like this was a Tim the Tank one. This feels like it was Tim the Tank. Anyways, we're quite simply going to combine these two things together and we're going to take a gulp of it and see if it's, it's supposed to taste like a Jolly Rancher. Exactly what kind of Jolly Rancher? I'm not super duper sure. So, uh, but we're going to find out. So let me bring you all over. 
to the close angle. That thing we were doing before, you know? I'll move you up just a tad, I'll bring you down just a tad as we can watch the bar for the next drink that will ensue. I'm gonna put this in a square shot glass. This is my share of square shot glass. It's actually quite simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix equal parts of our peach schnapps and our Midori. I'm actually very low on Midori, so the number of Midori cocktails we do is purely dependent on how much Midori I have left by the end of the stream, because I am most definitely going to finish off this bottle. There's some Midori as one part. I don't know if this is supposed to layer on top of each other. Again, the link that I have is kind of broken, so I apologize about that. I don't know whether this is supposed to be layered or otherwise, but we're going to try and see what happens anyway. Yeah, probably not. This is our Midori shot. It's a Jolly Rancher shot. Made creating using peach schnapps and, Midor and Midori. You can't really see the Midori. What an interesting color scheme. It's very green. It's just very, it's very, very green there. You can see the reflection of my surface in the background. That's great. That's all we have. It's a Jolly Rancher shot. Very quick, very easy. We're gonna move through this like that. Um, right off the nose, Actually, it's very, very peach schnappy. I can very much smell the peach in there. Peach schnapps to me are kind of peachy. They're not as peachy for, they're not as peach forward as other like peach spirits that I've had. Like the peach Svedka, peach vodka, tastes more like a peach than peach schnapps does. At least this particular brand of favorites. It's, it's just like sweet. This is just like a placeholder sweet flavor. And Midori is also another placeholder sweet flavor. They are both sweet. They're sweet in their own ways. You combine sweet and sweet together, you just get a different kind of sweet. And so what that type of sweet is, not exactly sure. Um, cheers, Bavosia, Prost, whatever you say. Let's go for it. That's very pleasant. I don't think it's very Jolly Ranchery. There is something there that is almost, I've never had a melon Jolly Rancher before. I have never had, it feels to me almost to be a little green apple-y. It's just kind of sweet. I mean, this is called a Jolly Rancher sap, but most of the Jolly Ranchers I've had have a bit of a poignant sourness or poignant tartness to them. And this is not really either of those things. It's very sweet. It goes down very easily. It's kind of like syrup. On the aftertaste, I'm getting a lot of those peach schnapp notes, which kind of, it's almost nutty in a way. There's something here that kind of sits on the tongue similarly to uh, the praline, evan the Evangeline's praline liqueur does, in the sense that it's kind of syrupy. It sticks around, but it's a very warm, it's a very, very warm shot. It's a very comfortable shot to take. It goes down very easily. And that's just one way that you would use uh, Japanese melon juice, Japanese melon liqueur. Like Midori, for instance. Um, I was honestly just very curious to see whether or not this Jolly Rancher shot tastes like a Jolly Rancher. Sort of? Not really. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just gonna, no, it doesn't really taste like, not, certainly not a Jolly Rancher that I've had. So, uh, that's, that's not. If you're following shot for shot along at home, then you're good. There's only, there's only one. There's plenty of, there are a number of other shots that involve Midori out there. Um, and honestly, <laughs> there's a piece of me that kind of wants to do an entire stream on just shots alone, but it, it wouldn't last very long because shot after shot after shot. Actually, if we just do a bunch of them, it shouldn't last long because if we do a bunch of them all in a row, it's going to last for like the first like hour or so. And then somebody's going to have to click the stop button for me because I don't even know if I'll be able to handle myself. Um, evidently, according to some friends that I've been out with, I can keep up shot for shot quite well. Uh, however, I don't remember any of those no moments because evidently if I was doing well, I was doing real well. I don't know why I'm putting the Midori away. I'm putting the schnapps away. No more schnapps this evening. We'll move on to something else. So now that we've got our kind of jokingness out of the way of how to use Midori in a cocktail. How do you do Midori in a cocktail? Oh, you just put it in a shot. You just take the whole thing down. Of course, you can do that with pretty much anything. This is just one way to do it. Anything mixed with peach schnapps and or Midori, probably going to taste really, really good. Um, at the very least, very sweet and very satisfying, at least for me um, and some other folks that I know as well. Um, but we're going to go on to a little bit something a little bit more serious, you know, something a little bit more serious. How do we want to use, how do we use Midori in a way that is a little more, I guess, I guess I want to say the term complex, because I feel like for the most part, my own particular experience with Midori has been in these kind of shots that 
are there are shots or drinks that like just don't really feel super honest about themselves. Like for example, the Jolly Rancher shot did not really taste much like Jolly Rancher. The There's a cocktail out there called the Melon Ball Cocktail, which I don't think we're gonna have time for this evening, but it's essentially just uh, melon liqueur. Actually, according to specifically, it is um, the Midori Melon Ball. Oh, actually, that's it, the back, on the back of the bottle. The Melon Ball Cocktail, according to Midori, is literally just melon liqueur, tequila, oh no, no, that's the margarita. Melon liqueur, vodka, and orange juice. So you're kind of taking a screwdriver and just kind of adding a bit of Midori to it. Like it just seems a little like, I want to know like with the littlest, little, with the little bit left that I have in this bottle of Midori, I want to figure out if there's something a little more exotic to use this thing for. Because really all I see Midori being used for are melon based shots combined with other flavors to make the shot or cocktail taste like something else like Jolly Rancher, Scooby-Doo shot, something else out there that just doesn't really come to mind. Um, and also just in general to just turn things green. Like I feel like there's gotta be more to this spirit, more to this historical Japanese melon liqueur, the fourth type of melon in our collection here, uh, to be to explore it a little bit for, further. And I did find one cocktail from liquor.com that used Midori in a way that I wasn't exactly expecting and I wanted to give it a try. And that cocktail is called Horn of the Bulls. And it utilizes Mordori combined with some other stuff that we'll get to, including the cucumber syrup from earlier, some tequila, as well as some cream, pineapple juice, and egg white, and a little bit of salt. And there's a lot that goes into it. It feels a little margarita-y. It feels a little flippy. It's in for a ride. It's called Horn of the Bulls. And that's what's up next. Horn of the Bulls. The bulls. Oh, I'm running out of you don't have juice over here. There we go. I am kind of running out of juice with this guy. Well, look at that. Well, we're trying our best over here. So, Horn of the Bulls comes from liquor.com. And evidently, there is the whole like summary here about kind of talking through Midori. It's a green, it's an electric green melon flavored liqueur. And that kind of goes all over the place to talking about a couple of different pieces of history of Midori. Apparently it's recipe changed in 2012 to kind of take a lot of the sugars and stuff out of it. I don't know exactly what was wrong with it. Um, there, There's a folks, I believe it was bartender Will Lee who created or paired Midori with savory and salinic notes, such as sesame seeds, sesame oil, salt, and other different types of spices and stuff. And he was the one who come out, came up with this cocktail here, the Horn of the Bulls. Um, they're kind of talking a little bit more about the cucumber syrup and stuff there. I will lay everything that I wind up getting from like recipe websites and whatnot. I'll try to do maybe a summary of it in the blog that pops up later. I will also obviously put the link to it in the Discord after the blog actually comes out and stuff. So you can peruse at your ledger the stories that kind of some of these websites go into. I'll admit, some of them, don't go into as much detail as I suppose I would like them to. It's it's nice to see a, a website that kind of gives a little bit more text to the cocktail than just here's your recipe. So that's how what kind of inspires me. So that's the same kind of respect that I try to give to all the cocktails that we cover on these streams here. But so we'll move right into it. Our Horn of the, Horn of the Bulls cocktail is everything is going into a shaker and we have to dry shake it because we're adding a little bit of egg white in there. So let me grab a spare shaker. Let me think, depending on the time we have left, We'll probably do one more after this one. And uh, let me just clean out one of the, uh, maybe I wanna do that? Yeah, I'll clean out one of the shakers that I have already. Whoops, I'm gonna utilize one of those. I'm gonna need to get some of my strainers cleaned up too. And this one's covered in watermelon, which seems preferable to the other one. So I'll do a little bit of cleanup. Probably should have done this before, but this is what we have. And that one day, one day we'll get more, get more of this stuff. Actually, this one is completely, that, that, that strainer that is completely eviscerated. Let me try, this guy's got some mint and stuff in it. Oh well, that's okay. If we were making common cocktails and stuff, things that we're reusing all over again, it would be all right. This one doesn't have any mint in it, but maybe it'll benefit from a little bit of that schwang, you know? It gets double strained anyway, so anything that kind of ends up passing through it is going to be out the other side anyways. Or at least that is the intent. The bar with the next is always looking for additional resources and different places to source them and stuff from too. You could just buy like 10 shakers from Amazon all at the same time. But I kind of want to like, as I kind of do my explorations and stuff, I want to get different things from different places. That is the, that is the idea. And uh, we are doing a bit of travel. Actually, so Anna and I this weekend are heading uh, to a wedding. So we're going to do a little, probably take a couple of stops along the way, depending on the journeys and stuff. Actually, I, I, I'm really a fan of the idea of kind of 
uh, sharing the journey along with everyone else. And I'm trying to get a little bit better at posting more often to like socials and stuff to keep people involved in whatever's going on because the world of mixology can be kind of interesting as you go into liquor stores and try to find new flavors and go to bars and stuff. So for the most part, I'm trying to consistently update the Instagram with wherever our travels takes us. Not really a call to action or anything, but like if you want to be able to join us for Long for the Journeys, that, that would probably be the place to look. That in the Discord too. We're also we're also sharing a lot of stuff in the Discord as well, if you want to pop over there. We're just, just a fun little small community right now. It's very enjoyable, very comforting place, I think. In my opinion. So we will, first thing, we're going to add an egg white to this guy. And I am prone to messing things up. So I will grab the egg. I'll grab my egg whiter for the thing that separates it. And if we screw it up, then that's okay. That's why we have, <laughs> that's why we use this shaker. We use this one and, uh, as opposed to the other one. Uh, let's swap things over to the cocktail angle. This is kind of the, um, I kind of like the idea of walking everybody through the process a little bit closer so we can actually see what's going on with some of these things over here. I don't think that I'm much one for technique and whatnot, at least not yet, but maybe one day we'll get to that point. And this kind of stuff, this sort of um, close-up angle can be beneficial to people who are just trying to figure it out for themselves. That's the idea. So we're going to put an egg white in here. I have this little separator thing. It's really easy. Crack, crack, and um, if you're cool... Not like me. You can split it over the top. I'm, uh, I'm not. It's been a hot minute since I've cracked an egg, and I'm nervous about it, but it's chill. There we go. Very gingerly. Gingerly we roll along in there. Bye bye, egg. There we go. And essentially, we've caught our yolk. We kind of move it around a little bit. We can coerce the egg white to get out of there. There we go. That is the idea, at least. Please don't pop the yolk. If I pop it along this way, it should break. There we go. Awesome. And then I actually have a container of egg yolks um, that I've been keeping track of as I've been making eggs. So just so we can cook them up in the morning. So I'll put the egg yolk with the other collection. There we go. And we'll clean this off later. Perfect. Egg white, hardest part is complete, right? No. There's more stuff. There's more stuff. So let's get right to it. Next, what we're gonna add is we're gonna need to add some Blanco tequila. The Blanco tequila of my choice this evening is going to be Montezuma. I've actually kind of, I, I like this, I like this, um, what's it called? It's called tequila. I get lost for words sometimes. I actually like this brand and I, I like it very much. I also bought this other brand called, I think, Tortilla, but Tortilla apparently was not what I thought it was. It's tequila, but it's not. There's something else going on with it. It might be like a tequila, like like a sugar, like a tequila with additives. Oh, by the way, we need an ounce and a half of this. An ounce and a half are about 44 milliliters uh, combined with our egg white. Notice, I'm not adding any ice yet. We're going to dry shake this first to emulsify the egg, and then we'll add all the other. Then we'll add ice to it to continue to get everything to know each other later. Next, we're gonna add half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters of Midori which is our green. It's our melon in this case. This is as far as the melons go this evening. We saved all the fun stuff for the beginning. Now that it's getting late, everyone's getting tired and stuff. We've had a couple of drinks in us. It's only natural. Next, we'll add a half an ounce of cucumber syrup. In particular, liquor.com was mentioning that the cucumber simple syrup is a lovely fit and it pairs well with gin and tequila, evidently, and would also go well in gimlets and margaritas. Which is great because I have a, a quite a bit of cucumber simple syrup now that I have to utilize in other cocktails or my coffees in the morning. And I don't really know how well cucumber is going to go um, combined with coffee. But honestly, weirder things have been combined with coffee in this world. Um, such as animals actually shitting out coffee beans and then using that to make the coffee. So in that way, we're not really combining things with coffee. We're creating the coffee from things that of themselves are weird in a way, but to each their own. The world is a wonderfully weird place and we want it to stay that way. So next, after we add our cucumber syrup, we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice, which I have in my cooler over here. Um, I have it in a big old Bacardi container because uh, last week, couldn't find any good small containers of pineapple juice, and all we had was the big one. So I put it into a bottle over here because it makes sense. Three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of pineapple juice. I shook it. I, sh I shook it. I shook it prior to the stream, and it is still very much together. So I didn't feel the need to shake it again. 
Why Next we have to add heavy cream. We need to add heavy cream to that, oddly enough. So interestingly enough, this is a cocktail that calls for an egg white as well as some heavy cream. I don't think I've ever, I mean, maybe I have had a, thing, a combo like that before. I don't really know. And because it's specifically heavy cream, it's possible that this is gonna have a very interesting texture to it. Brad says, it has been shuck. It has been shucking as uh, very much so. Let's see. So this is actually a fresh thing, uh, cream. I dig it. This is gonna be a rich drink. It's gonna be a rich drink indeed. It's already quite rich and it's riching all over my, <laughs> it's riching all over my fingers. Holy crap. That is very, very thick, oddly enough. That is very thick for a fresh thing, uh, cream. <laughs> Excuse me, it creamed all over my fingers. Uh, we need three quarters of an ounce of our heavy cream. Pop it in there, there we go. And that's all. So actually, it's not quite all. It says, I'm trying to see whether we put the salt at the end. No, we just put a, a pinch of salt in it. We have our egg white in there already, pinch of salt. That's what we're gonna add. Just a pinch of salt is all that we have left to add to our shaker. And I got some salt. I got some salt. Put a little bit of salt in the hands. A little bit of salt, give it a little bit of a pinch. Just the slightest pinch. Get all the rest of the cream in there too. A little bit of salt. A little bit of salt, a little bit of salt, a little bit of salt. A single pinch. Just a tad. The rest of it goes to the bucket. Alrighty then. Now what do we do? We're gonna, we're gonna shake this sucker. That's what we're gonna do next. Specifically, without ice. We are not trying to use ice in this just yet. We're gonna emulsify the egg white, get everything to know each other a little bit. That is the idea. So we're gonna flip things over and see what happens. Now note, if you're gonna dry shake, the pressure differential is in the opposite direction. You really have to keep these things together. So that's what we're going to try. Trying to work on my breathing technique a little bit because <laughs> I tend to hold my breath and get a little lightheaded during those uh, during those intense shakes there. All right, so now that everything's kind of been emulsified together, it's got an interesting thickness to it. Actually, I'll show it on the camera now because we're kind of talking about it. But the idea is to give a little bit of texture, and because there's a bit of heavy whipping cream in there, it's a little bit it's a little bit thickened, and it has such an interesting smell to it. Very interesting indeed. Let's add an ice cube to that so we can shake things around a bit and start breaking apart some structure, some microstructures. There we go. Now we've got our ice in there. We'll get things nice and cold. Ice and shake again until well chilled. Double strain to a Collins glass without ice and top with soda water. And we garnish afterwards. So I'm gonna need another tall glass. I got tall glasses. We'll make that work. Shaking round two. This time significantly wetter than before. I'm getting a little bit used to that shaking technique, so excuse me if I'm a little rusty on it. All right. Whew, it's working, dude. I feel stronger already. So now let's take a Collins glass over here. We'll strain over top of it with no ice, and we're gonna top it all with club soda, as well as a little, uh, um, what do we call it? It's a garnish. That's what we called it. It's a garnish. That's what it is. Unapologetically so. Hello, you. Yeah. So we will double strain this, right? Double strain into a Collins glass. That is the idea. This thing is very much not wanting to come apart. Eventually, I'll get uh, used to that whole whacking technique, too. Strain once. Shame on me. Shame twice. Shame twice? I needed another one of my strings. This is the second, two two double strain drinks in one string. Doesn't usually happen. Come over here. There you go. Pour this over top, let's see what we got. Such a color. Such a color indeed. We'll top that off with club soda and then garnish appropriately. There we 
go. Ooh, don't fall over. Oh, there's a little bit of stuff at the bottom of that glass. It got really thick down there, though, with the hole. Now I'll top it out with soda water. Let's grab one of these guys. I don't know if I have enough in this particular container here. And in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll grab one of the limes from earlier. Let me create our garnish in the meantime. Take one of our ends that wasn't quite convinced yet. I'm gonna remove the sticker. I almost put a I almost put a stickered garnish on the drink. Not a bad thing. Definitely not out of style for the bar in the next, but you know. Get that off the side. There we go. Put this guy on standby. Put you back in the bag. Toss you over there. Top off with soda water. Might have a fizz effect to it. Who knows? And right up on top, put a little lime garnish. Yeah, it was a little bit a little bit high, a little bit high there. But all's well that sort of ends well. Was it perfect? No, no, it was not. That's all right. Let's see if we can kind of recover this a little bit. It is very full. A thinner a thinner lime wedge would have been preferable there. Plus, you know, there's cream in there, so we got a line with- Yep, you know what? We tried our best. <laughs> Ta-da! We did it! <laughs> we did it! That actually tastes- That tastes beautiful. I'm gonna try my damnedest to take a little picture of this from back here, too. That is not super ple present, uh, pleasant looking, but we have it nonetheless. So far, that tastes- Excellent. Actually, I really can't, I can't wait to taste that. I, out of this very brief moment that I had being able to taste it, I get the salt and I get the Midori and a little bit of the tequila. That's, that's good so far. Let me grab myself a straw. Cause that seems to be most appropriate here. Right? That'll work. Going back for this little striped guy again. Right off the bat, it smells so powerfully, so potently of the cream. Like it is very, very, it's creamy. That's what it smells like. It smells like a lime cream, almost key limey in a way. Very pleasant. It's a little bit, a little bit over the place. Little bits that I'm getting, lime juice so far. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cream. It's, it's, su it's such a light flavor too. It's a very, very light cocktail, but it is, Cream, it is Midori. The tequila is very potent there. This is just a touch of salinity. It is just salty enough to work, right? So there's like a cream to me can have almost a cheesy component to it that is not necessarily pleasant to me in a cocktail, but it's almost like the slight bit of salinity combined with the sweetness from the Midori and the agave notes of the tequila wash away those more bitter, rindy, cheesy notes, and replaces it with something a little more savory, a little more soft, it really softens things out. And I think a piece of that as well is probably the egg white that we added there, which kind of does a job of kind of softening things out. It's interesting that usually when you do a flip like that, where you put the egg white in there, there's going to be a layer up on top on its own without any sort of cream. Now, the layer includes the almost, sl the slightly whipped and partially curdling because of the lime wedge cream up on top, which does a really good job of kind of evening things out. Even so, there is a slight, super duper slight sourness, almost like yogurt, almost like Greek yogurt is sour because of what's happening with that cream there and the way that it's mixing and matching with everything else in there. There's a lot going on and it's delightful. It certainly doesn't look the best, but it's okay. So long as it tastes good, there's really nothing wrong with it. Um, unless you were serving that at a bar and you were being specifically rated on um, aesthetics, in which case, but it tastes good. It's interesting too, because all of those notes that I just described, there's a, there's a bunch of tonic, or not tonic, there's a bunch of club soda in this. And it's so all of those notes are really, really low. It's kind of like you combined club soda, tequila, and something else. Cream soda, uh, did I say club soda? I meant cream soda. It's very cream soda-y because it's got soda water and cream in it. 
which now that I think about it, makes a lot of sense. It's super duper pleasant. I like that very much. That's something I'm gonna, I'm keeping that behind with me. That I really, really like that. It is like, and plus like, there's not a lot of sourness there. Despite the fact, actually, did this have any? No. Oh, it had the pineapple juice. Maybe that was what was going on here. That might be a component here. I'm not really getting much of the pineapple though, to be honest. Nothing in that strikes me as overtly pineapple-y. Except for the tequila notes. The tequila could be a little pineapple-y. Those agave notes are kind of combining with what could be pineapple-y. That kind of um, pointed sour sourness. Wow, I really like that. That's great. And and plus, I will note, there's come some cream that has been collecting and curdling on the edge, and I'm very, very curious to see what that tastes like. It just tastes like cream. And it's green, so. I, that's, you know, in a way, that is exactly what it needs. In a way, it is accomplishing exactly what we had hoped it to, and that is, it is a, it is a cocktail that utilizes Midori. That's really all we can ask for. As I say, trying to take a photo of it. Oh, there we go. We did it. We moved on. So I think this is good. I think, uh, honestly, I, I think we've kind of seen this through to the logical end of things. I think this is probably all the cocktails that I wanted to cover this evening. I thought about maybe doing another one, but I just remembered I have to cut up all the other melons and stuff. So uh, that's all of our cocktails this evening. That is That is what I'm going to be calling last call for the evening. We'll do a little bit of a run through of exactly what it was that we went over this evening. And um, I want to stick around a little bit. I got to do some prep for the weekend. So if you want to stick around for it, feel free to do so. But if you're if you're here for the cocktails and stuff, you can safely go on your way and we'll see you here next time, hopefully. Uh, don't forget to, I don't know, do whatever it is you need to do to make sure you can come back next time. Actually, I think next week what we're going to do is Anna and I are planning, we got this board game that we want to play that is, um, it is spirit themed specifically like like uh liquor and spirits themed called distilled that we really really want to play my anticipation was to play some games at the bar when we reached a 250 follower goal over here on twitch but we've been uh, we've been doing really really well on the other platforms and stuff too so i think that's just reason to celebrate all the new people who are popping in and whatnot so hi to everybody welcome it's going to be great and that's what we'll be doing next week um in the meantime let's go over from where we started right um so let's do a little bit of a oh i, I guess yeah that's what we'll do the next segment, the current recipe is, I guess, last call for you. That's what, that's what's going. That's what's going there. That's what I'll put up on the board. That's our, that's our final recipe. That makes sense, right? Yeah, it kind of makes sense. There we go. There we go. So where, where, where did we find ourselves this, uh, today? Um, I would show you the pe Oh, no, I can show you. I can show you the pieces of the melons that we used to get to the point we're at today. We started off with three entire melons. First off, we covered the mighty cantaloupe. The the, uh, the it's, it's, a, it's a melon. That's what it is. The cantaloupe's name, evidently, was Robert. And Robert facilitated us through making a cocktail called the Magic Melon, uh, which combines uh, as its constituents some white wine, some cantaloupe puree, as well as some vodka. That's pretty much it. The recipe comes from Tomasello Winery as a means to use their Shorehouse white wine, uh, and it tastes really good. It's got a very nice component to it that is very heavy on the wine note, but subtly kind of supported by those other melon cantaloupe notes there. I wanted to use that one first because it has been a hot number. Oh, and I went to the store to find it. It was a hot number among the flies. So I wanted to preserve the freshness of Robert as best as we possibly could. And we did so. And we appreciate Robert for his sacrifice. Next, we have this honeydew melon, oh, who we aptly named Robbie, and I think was probably the most delicious of our kills, uh, who went into creating this cocktail here called She Only Wears Red, which was from, I got the recipe, from Imbibe, Imbibe Magazine, uh, and is from Jeremy Owen Barrett, who combines the honeydew melon juice, lime juice, cucumber simple syrup, green chartreuse, and gin in this sort of south side last word combination that tastes incredibly pleasant. It's very mojito-like. It's very heavy on those mint notes. It's very heavy on the um, 
the lime notes as well, and it ends with this sort of chartreuse note that sticks around um, while doing a little bit of a song and dance in between. It's very pleasant. It's very forward on those kind of soury notes there, but it's very, very nicely balanced, I would say. And it, gives, it keeps you along for the ride, which is very nice. Worthy of Robbie's sacrifice. Then we moved on to this guy over here, which is a watermelon-based cocktail from New Deal Distillery to use their Portland 90 vodka, which I don't actually have, but we utilize just other vodka for it. It's called Heat Exchange, and the idea is to combine vodka, Blanc Vermouth, with Blanc Vermouth, I had a dry, I don't have any Blanc over here, but we used it anyways, and it tasted really, really good, along with lime juice, syrup, simple syrup, and some watermelon. There's a lot of watermelon juice in there. And as such, it kind of dilutes everything together and believes things with kind of starts as watermelon and it ends as watermelon while doing this dance in between that is very, very prevalent depending on the type of vermouth that you use. This was very, very heavy on those uh, Noily Pratt dry vermouth notes that I had. And I'm very curious to see how it would have tasted with the Dolan Blanc vermouth that the recipe specifically calls for. And aside from that, the vodka that I used was a Union Forge vodka over here from uh, Philadelphia. And I'm curious to see how a different type of vodka, for example, the Portland 90 would go in this because I have noticed there is sort of a difference between whether you use one kind of vodka or another kind of vodka. They're supposed to be neutral spirits, but you know, this is a very imperfect world that we live in and there is a bit of flavor imparted depending on what kind of base you use. For example, a grain-based spirit uh, versus like a potato-based vodka, for instance. I've noticed some difference. My favorite, I think, is... I don't have it down here. Uh, it's not here at the bar, but it's over in the closet over there. The blue bottle collection. This uh, bottle of Skunk Town vodka. Very tasty. And it's a favorite of Anna's, Anna and mine as well. But moving on from our fresh kills. After that, we weren't dealing with the melons anymore. We were dealing with other things entirely. We were dealing with this bottle of Midori liqueur over here and trying to figure out what it is that what is it that you do with Midori, right? It's apparently infused with Japanese melons. I've never had a Japanese melon before. Maybe one day if I ever am able to grace the presence of Tokyo or Japan, or Jap Japan is able to grace me as being over there, I'd like to get a taste of one of those Japanese melons. I know nothing about them. I, when I went to the store today, I was trying to find... There's a melon in the store that I wanted to buy. It's super tiny, but I didn't get a chance to try it, which is unfortunate because I couldn't find it today. Instead, I was too busy with trying to get all the other stuff. Um, but the first thing we tried to do with our Midori is there's a lot of drinks out there that make use of it just to turn things green, or you use it in shots, you use it in very, various other cocktails and stuff. Um, for example, a melon ball, which we didn't cover this evening, but we did try it combined with peach schnapps for a Jolly Rancher shot, according to somebody on TikTok who's name escapes me because the link that I have is broken, but it was recommended by a friend of mine. It does not really taste like Jolly Rancher, but if you combine peach schnapps or Midori with pretty much anything, it tastes a bit sweeter and a bit better. So I liked it, took it down very, very easy. It's a very warm shot to take. It's very comfy. It's got a viscosity to it that is probably comforting to a lot of people. Uh, it's very easy to take too. So uh, if you're looking for your next shot at the bar, maybe you want to try peach schnapps and Midori together. Very nice. And it comes out like a cool little neon green, which I feel like if you add a little bit of tonic water to that, not for the flavor, just to make it glow in the dark at like a rave bar, would be like really, really cool. And then finally, after we took the shot, which is no longer here because it is, it is gone. It is in my body. Um, we have, we settled upon this cocktail here called Horn of the Bulls, which utilizes Midori in a different way. Instead of just kind of turning something green, it functions as a piece of a larger hole there. The hole in this case being a combination of tequila, that Midori, cucumber syrup, pineapple juice, heavy cream, an egg white, and a pinch of salt to create this cocktail, which is a very, very light combination of something that's kind of, it's, it's almost yogurty in a way. It's got a slight bit of salinity to it. It's a very, very complex cocktail that's just got a lot going for it. To me, it's very, it's kind of like cream soda with tequila with a little bit of insert other sweetness here from that, from those, uh, that cucumber syrup from that pineapple juice there. It's very, very nice. And it's like probably my favorite cocktail this evening. I'll admit, actually the, the, fir the first sip is a little, it's a little too creamy, I would say, but it is very, very cream for it. The, the, right at the forefront, it's got this almost like yogurty, Greek yogurty, creamy tequilaness to it. And then it ends with those more um, sweeter Midori and cucumber notes to it that are a little more light, a little more cooling, um, but it's almost like a, almost an herbal. It's very, it's very Greek yogurt to me. And I think that's a, po that feels like a positive to me. I'll take that. And that was all the cocktails that we covered this evening. As far as cocktails go, that's all that I'm prepared to be doing this evening on our little episode of 
millions at the bar with an X. And this is usually the time where I would say, please go on your way. It's been a pleasure being your bartender this evening. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night, morning, or otherwise, depending on what time zone you're in. I actually have a little bit of work that I need to do before the weekend begins. And a piece of that is properly dissecting and uh, sectioning off most of the melons that we have here. So as far as the show is concerned, we're pretty much over. And so if you'd like to leave from there, you're more than welcome to do so. If you want to stick around for a little bit longer, though, I've got a little bit of prep and whatnot to do, and it would be an honor if you feel like joining me until the bitter, bitter end. Um, in the meantime, we'll do a little bit of cleanup over here, and that is your permission to scooch on out if you want to. But if not, well, join me for a little, a little journey. We got our lo-fi. Actually, I think I'll join y'all for the lo-fi now, because uh, I don't usually listen to it as the stream is going, but I will. I'll turn the volume up for myself so we can all kind of listen together. I wonder if there's a way to denote that like the bar is over. Let me sign a, let me kind of turn the lights down a little bit, right? Alexa, turn off the top light. Okay. There we go. It's a little bit of dark after hours. It's darker over here. The show's pretty much over, I suppose. In any case, cool. Let's do a little bit of cleanup over here, shall we? Very, very fun indeed. I guess I'll open this up to the crowd. What's going on in everybody's life, right? If you want, if you feel like sharing, feel free to do so. Let me grab some of our cocktails from over yonder. I kind of want to place a couple of them over the table over there just to give myself a little bit more space to work with. So that's what I will do. Actually, you know what? I'll keep, I'll keep these guys. I don't plan on using the cocktail angle at all, so I'll just kind of like stack them up to the front. What is the most well-lit area of the bar right now? It's not usually something that I consider. Put you guys over here. That's a good idea. There you go. Put you over there. We'll put, kind of put the other drinks over there as well in the light as well. All right. Coolio. Welcome everybody to After Hours. Anna's kind of running up the stairs over there. Dearest, how are you doing? Doing all right. That's good. That's very good. We're kind of all we're kind of all in packing mode over here. Anna's doing a bit of cleaning as well. I know I got to pack up all my stuff and whatnot put my bottles away and whatnot. And I guess next piece will be taking this guy and putting him on a coaster so I can keep sipping for a little bit longer. There we go. Let me do a real quick, cause the show's pretty much over. Let me change our little description up here just to reflect the vibes, you know? Melons, how to drink them. Let's see. Last, last call. I don't know, we'll do that. That feels, that feels appropriate. That feels appropriate and honest. There we go, put these guys over here. Let me grab my cutting board so I can just do a little bit of dissection of these melon bits over here. My idea is kind of just, you know, just dicing up these melons a little bit. Oh, I know it's, ah, I just realized. I had my, uh, ah, I just remembered that, um, I have a melon baller. It's a little tool that I've got to be able to ball up the melons and stuff, and I just realized that I never actually used that to garnish any of our cocktails, which is actually kind of unfortunate. I forgot about that. Um, maybe as we're going through these guys, I'll just do a little quick thing, because uh, I, I forgot to actually utilize that as a garnish. None of the cocktails specifically called for a melon ball garnish, except for the melon ball cocktail, which it didn't actually get to. I think I probably would have run out of Midori, to be honest. Oh, goodness gracious. This is fun, though. Actually, I learned this trick from Brad, where you cut off one side of a circular object, makes it easier to cut. Who knew? I love the fact that we have experienced and people experienced people who are willing to share out there, which is very, very nice, very kind. Not obligated at all. Not obligatory, that is. You don't have to. Just stick around. Stick around and vibe with the lo-fi. I'll be vibing with you all this time. I can actually use a little bit. Oh, let me get the melon baller. We're gonna put the melon baller. There you are. Different lighting than usual. Let me bring this guy over here so we can see the melon baller in action. <laughs> it's kind of fun. You kind of just scoop the uh, things out. Let me grab the other half of the melon. Specifically, Robert, in this bag over here, so I can start putting the other pieces in there. I'm gonna put them in a cooler, put them in the fridge. I'm gonna take them to the beach with us tomorrow. I put my bag up front here. 
if I had a bowl instead. Actually, let me let me do that, right? Let me take my plastic bag. And I can kind of put it into one of the spare containers that I have over here. So I can just kind of like put them into the bag. I think my rings have been off for a while, so <laughs> I'm not going to be making as much as a mess as I was previously. Get in there. There we go. Working smarter, not harder. There we go. That's what I got right there. And, uh, yeah, I'll just kind of, I'll wedge my body in between it, make it a little bit easier while we do it on the melon stuff. Just for this rind here. I'll do some cutting for the other one. Am I using the big side? Is this the big side? No, this is the big side. Should be using the big side. It's whack. Like, this feels almost like you're utilizing, like, an ice cream scooper, but it's inside of a melon, and I love it. Come here, bud. Oh, that's a little tough one. Yeah, I'm not a professional melon baller, but you can get some, like, really cool shapes with this guy. Probably gonna steal a snack for myself in a moment. That'll be the one. That'll be the one. Alright, for the other pieces, I don't think I'll need to use the melon baller. But I'll put this over here for now. As we cut up the rest of our cantaloupe. Usually I'm not paying this much attention to the music. I got some favorites and stuff on here. Let's let's move to some of that stuff. This is a good one. I'm gonna find one of the good ones. One of the ones that I like. I'll vibe along with y'all. Nah. This is a nice one. It's got notes of the water and stuff. This is the lo-fi girls music, by the way. I very much enjoy lo-fi. It's something that I kind of like got hooked onto in college for workflow and stuff. And um, it's very, very relaxing. It also kind of helps me focus a little bit, which is a good thing. Let me move you back here a bit. Eh, that's fine, you don't have to. Or melon bits in a different location entirely. I don't really know what to do with melon bits. If anybody has ideas on what to do with melon bits, like, so that we don't have just to, like, throw them out, you know? I feel like that would be beneficial information. Because I kind of have an idea of what to do with spare pineapples. I have an idea of what to do with spare lemons. And I have that repertoire of what to do with extra, extra food items is something that I'm still trying to get a pretty good idea of. Uh, I'm sure there's a wealth of information out there and a number of books and resources. If anybody has recommendations, hit me up. Very curious. If anybody's got any weekend plans too, let me know, let me know. Personally, my plans, we got a wedding to go to down in the Outer Banks, which is awesome. I haven't been back to the Outer Banks in a hot minute. They, actually, I've, there's been two weddings over the last couple of years that have been in the Outer Banks. And I love the Outer Banks because of how tumultuous the waves are. Like, I just love really tumultuous waves. Actually, it was probably the worst waves that I've ever encountered, but it was probably some of the most fun I've had in my life. I lost a Fitbit to the water down there. Maybe I'll get it back this year. Who knows? Jasper says, I know for watermelon rind, you can pickle it. You can pickle watermelon rind. That's super cool. I didn't know that. And I think to pickle things, you just put it in vinegar, right? That's 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 just how far it goes. That's so cool. I didn't know that at all. That's such a good idea. And that's for the watermelon, right? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if you can do that for the other pieces, too. Well, now that you say that, Jasper, I'm actually going to get a separate bag for my watermelon rind. And I'm going to see what happens if I try to pickle this shit. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll make a... a, a I'll update you all my progress on that if I ever actually remember to do it. We'll see. We'll see. All right, all those. I don't know what to do with the cantaloupe, Ryan. That's fine. The goal here is just to try to use up all the cantaloupe and stuff that we got. Put everything in a container. 
so I can kind of put it all in the refrigerator and then share it with all the peoples over the weekend. I don't know if I'll need more of that or not. Compost? Compost is also a pretty good idea. I actually, It's interesting. I, I find it... All of the composting solutions here in Philadelphia all, like, cost, like... I mean, I don't think it's an obscene amount of money. I just, like, I don't know why I would... I wish I had the resources to be able to compost on my own as opposed to having to, you know, basically pay somebody to take the waste away. I see Peter Chris popping in here saying, Yummy! Are you a fan of cantaloupe? If you're not a fan of cantaloupe, no problem. There's also honeydew melon as well as watermelon as well that we'll be cutting up a little bit of as well. How have you been, Peter? It's been a hot minute. How are you doing? I think you were part of... I think you're a part of... I, I can't remember exactly what community we're all part of. I think Neko's crowd, I believe. I haven't said hello to Neko in a while. I apologize for not having checked in. Are you still streaming out there, Peter? Because I think I recall you playing... I don't remember what it was I last caught you playing, but I remember enjoying in Hoppa on all those streams a little bit. I'm a bit of a lurker, so I really don't make my presence known, but I was aware. Heh, <laughs> you're goddamn right. I love it. The Neko Nation. I believe it. I hope everyone is doing well. I have, uh, it was interesting. Um, what makes me, when I think of that, I remember, I think it was, actually, I think both of you have, like, really, really nice VTuber models. It was so cool. I listened to a, an artist. I listened to a singer by the name of Amelie, and Amelie apparently goes by Monarch on Twitch, and she's got this beautiful, beautiful blue-toned butterfly motif VTuber model that looks super duper cool. I love it. I love the butterfly motif, and my favorite color is a really dark ultra marine blue, so big fan. Also, her music is just awesome, and I absolutely love it. I'm gonna go for my melon balling technique for this guy over here. See how much we can pull from it. Do, 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 do. Hello, dearest. Oh, thank you for bringing containers. I appreciate it. I just broke the one. I wasn't sure how many you were doing. No, that's perfect. I mean, I'm just using plastic bags, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I can put some of the bigger bits in there. Awesome, awesome. Peter says, I am doing fine, which is lovely to hear. I streamed yesterday. I'm more focused on college and art, though. How are you? Things are going rather well over here. I'd be lying if I said that things are perfect, though. Things have gotten a little... Things are getting I'm really... Really intense with work. What was that you said, dear? What kind of art? What kind of art? Says Anna, yelling from digital the distance. Watercolor. Anna asks, digital watercolor quilting. Quilting's very specific. Sculpting. Oh, I thought you said quilting. Quilting is art. I believe it. That sounds so fun. I think it was. What was I thinking? Uh, Jasper also says hi, Anna, in the distance. Are you still there? She's downstairs. I think. I forgot to transfer your message. I'm so sorry about that. I was too slow. I was focusing more on not cutting my fingers off. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. That was very good though. Yeah, actually the art sounds cool. I think we have, uh, oh my gosh, I miss, what was it? Something came to my mind when I thought of art for a moment and it is completely lost on me. I mean, there's like art museums and stuff here in Philadelphia, which is, which is cool, you know? Uh, I haven't been to any of them recently though. I would say I'm not too much an art or connoisseur. Actually, I have a coworker of mine now who um, does like graphic design and stuff. This is really cool. I get to talk to him about it a little bit. It's so cool. All the stuff that you see on streams and stuff and the emotes and the thumbnails. That's really cool, actually. It's nice to be able to share that stuff around. Peter says our major is in computers and do digital art. I can't work too well on watercolor. I like, I would say I'm not super good with my hands, um, but if I have a proper reference, I can do pretty well, like all the stuff on the boards and stuff behind me. Um, watercolor I tried with a little bit. Didn't work super duper well. I tried to take like a like an acrylic painting class back when I was in high school. It didn't work out there either. Um, but in terms of the, the, um, the digital art, it's just that you have so much room there to be able to work around with. Like I love just being able to, like that's where all the thumbnail stuff happens, you know? It's cool. I've been doing that kind of stuff since, ooh, hot minutes. And, you know, the more you work with it, the more, like, your brain just kind of gets this creative energy to do, like, whatever it wants to. And that, I think, is one of my favorite parts of it. Just art in general, you know? Not specifically with, um, not specifically with digital or other art. So our cantaloupe is all completely diced up, which is great. What kind of digital, says Anna? There is a lot in there. Absolutely. I'd be, yeah. I like the, um, 
I feel like most of the digital art that I've seen, actually, there's this really, really cool, um, yeah, depending on what kind of digital art, there is this really awesome follow on Twitter, and I believe they go by X shells, I X period shells, S H E double L S. And it's like really, really cool computer generated art. It's like, like that's the best way that I can think of to describe it. It's like you see these really awesome, like abstract polygonal shapes and colors and whatnot that are just, it's so trippy in a way. And I'm sure there's probably deeper meaning behind it that goes well beyond my level of comprehension, but it's cool to look at and the animations are really, really cool. And plus I'd ask too, like if you're doing digital art and stuff like that, have you played around with any of the AI stuff and whatnot, like Dolly or Mid Journey? I've played around with it a little bit. I, I'll admit, I get some inspiration for some of the stuff that I do by plugging it into the machine every once in a while. It's kind of cool to be able to, I mean, you know, when your brain's stuck for writer's block, it could be uh, kind of useful to get a little bit of a jump start. I know that's a bit of a hot topic though. Um, it was interesting, my boss the other day specifically pressured me into getting the uh, uh, the premium of ChatGPT because it, apparently right now the next version of it has like this really cool code interpreter because I do a lot of code work uh, in firmware development. So it can be potentially really helpful for interpreting pieces of code that I might be struggling with syntax and stuff. I'm relatively new to this stuff anyway, so it winds up being a necessity. Moving on to our honeydew melon. Cut this thing down for the weekend. Oh, hello there. Watch out now. Pieces of the honeydew are coming for the attack. There we go, bud. Thank you, Robbie. We really appreciate your <laughs> we appreciate your sacrifice. Peter says, I'm a noob, so I just do fan art. I play with AI to make some wallpapers for my PC and my phone. I don't know if I agree with that, Peter. I don't think, if it comes to fan art, I feel like you can't be a noob when you do fan art. Sure, maybe like the, the, the style and whatnot that you're going for might be something you're still figuring out, but at the very least, like you found something you're passionate about and you're putting, metaphorically speaking, pen to paper and making those images come to life. I feel like, I mean, this is just my own hot take over here. The noob is the person who is yet to go out there and even metaphorically speaking, putting pen to paper. So even if you've done even a little bit, I think you're at least 90% farther than most people would, who would consider themselves to be, let's say, fan artists or whatnot. I'm very curious if you, if you, feel, if you feel like you uh, want to share any of it, I'm very curious of it. I know maybe it's in that territory where it's like, oh, maybe not, which in which case, totally cool. But if you feel like sharing, feel free to do so. Some of the best, I think some of the best moments are just being able to go through like other people's stuff and whatnot. I need to take more of those moments where I just kind of like vibe. And I find one of the really fun things to do, especially it's just most of the stuff winds up popping up on Twitter for me, just to like scroll through all the really cool pieces of art. I should go to like, ah, oh, actually I should use Reddit, Reddit more for that. There's an entire place is specifically dedicated to that kind of stuff. That might be up my alley. Uh, something that I should execute on when I feel like putting in the mental effort for it. Which, uh, you know, mental effort. Hot commodity these days. Willpower is finite, so they say. So take advantage of it. I don't know. I've been reading books and stuff whatnot recently. Ooh. Excuse me. Being that this is a bar over here. I gotta ask, anybody out there got a cocktail this evening or a drink of choice? I was a total drink goblin this morning. I sat down at my desk and the first thing I did was I sat down with a full thing of pineapple water that we made from last week's pineapple, a full thing of uh, Earl Grey tea, a full glass of water. I did not go coffee this morning, but <laughs> I sat at my desk uh, before work started my little morning routine where which fe features a bagel and various different beverages and <laughs> i was like my god i'm such a drink goblin over here it was so funny we were on a um i was like i was on a cot i was on a um i was on a call with some work group that i'm working with now and we had to share facts about ourselves and one of the facts that i gave was i'm a drink goblin and i kind of had to explain exactly what i mean there Peter says, I saw a cool drawing on my Spider-Man cup, so I recreated it on Clip Studio. Can I share it on your server? Oh, absolutely. Please feel free to do so. 
You are more than welcome to do so. Anybody out there who wants to just share your stuff, just like go for it. It could bright. I, I think of it this way. It could brighten someone's day. It could totally brighten someone's day. And I know there's at least two people that are very into Spider-Man in that server. At least two people. I, I wouldn't say that I'm a huge, huge Spider-Man fan. I find it hard to be a big fan of anything, but I did see the new movies. And I'd say I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, feel free to do so. I want to take a look at that. Oh, that's the wrong chat entirely. I was wrong about that. Here we go. Very good stuff. Um, I don't think I'm getting any more from this honeydew, Ryan. Does this still taste good? It's a little too hard. That's all I got for that guy. Oh, I almost missed a melon bowl. Go for it. <laughs> Anna says, or art. You got it, girl. I believe in you. I think one of the really cool things is I've been reading... It's interesting. It's so wild. I've read four books this year. I am not very much of a book person, but I've read four of them so far. And the one that I just got through is all about trying to build like better habits and stuff. And uh, one of the pieces of that is just being able to like look back on where you've been. And even if you're making a single percent of progress every single day, you are improving. And that Pete, that got me in a way that was really comforting actually, in the sense that I feel like a lot of times, like I, I hold myself, I hold myself to a very high standard, something I'm currently working out that you can, if you can look back on what you're doing and even find like 1% increase on where you were previously, that's goals. That's, that's like a really, really good place to be at. Some people, most people find it really, really difficult just to take that first step. So if you're beyond that first step, like that's really, that's literally from a mathematical standpoint, infinitely more progress. Cause if you started at zero and you put even one piece into it, anything greater than zero is more infinitely greater than zero. And for the more mathematical or scientifically famed people out there, <laughs> that's really encouraging to me. I really like that mentality. So, you know, also we got, we got a lot of time, you know, a piece of me feels like there's not a lot of time on this beautiful thing that we call on earth here. So sometimes I feel like I'm taking it for granted. I get a little bit worried, but it's all right. It's gonna be all right. Got more time than you think. I watched a random YouTube short video the other day. Somebody was like, man, when you're in your 20s, God, you think like it's the end of the world or something, but imagine if you had to live four more lives and you made it to like 100. Like, yeah, I don't think I want to imagine that. That sounds kind of freaky, but one day, hopefully, cross my fingers, it'll be pretty good. Very, very cool. I just saw, I just saw my notification pop up over here. Oh, Peter! Oh, that's so cool! I love the angle. That was on the, that was on the cup, and you recreated that from the, from the cup? That is super duper cool. I love, I love the contrasting, especially on, uh, I don't want to put it on the camera angle here unless you'd like me to, but it is, I love the contrasting between Spider-Gwen's tights, the legs versus the background. That pink color is a very, very, very nice contrast. I love what you did with that. I think that one of those, I think one of the pieces, like I do like a lot of, a lot of my art is based off of things that already exist out there. So creating art from scratch, which it kind of looks like you did that all with like vector, vector vertices and stuff, like all from scratch is miles ahead than anything that I'm capable of doing. I can't do anything like that. I think that is really, really cool. It's something that like, I think I wanted to get into at some point in my life, but like it just requires a bit more skill that it, the, the returns for me right now are not where they need to be. So just not something in my stars. Not now at least. Thank you, bro. No problem, my dude. Gotta be proud of whatever we put out there into the world. Whether that be a cocktail, a picture, or otherwise. Hello, dears. Good night. Good night, my love. Good night, Anna. Bye. Mmm. Piece of that honeydew there. Very, very sweet. There is definitely like a good part of the honeydew and a not so good part of the honeydew. And I can't tell the difference between them. Me here, I'll be up for a little while. I'm going to wind up cutting up all this melon and stuff, which I'm happy to be able to share with y'all. 
Um, then afterwards, there's all the cleanup of uh, what is it? All the cocktails and stuff. Actually, the more sipping I do over here, the less cleanup there is. But stay hydrated. Let me see. I want to see. I think I can get to like the proper part of the the honeydew if I kind of cut it like this. All the good meat in the center. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe not. I don't really know. I'm gonna shave it off the top. A little off the top, please. There you go. <laughs> Me going the hair cutter to my salonist. What do you want? A little off the top? No, not really. I've been cutting my hair a lot shorter recently. I think it looks pretty good. In my humble opinion. Hydration is nice. Hydration, dare I say, is necessary. A person much more ingenious than I once said, hydrate or dihydrate. It's very good. Actually, I was speaking about the pineapple from last week. Literally, just I cored the pineapple, cut all the pits into pieces, and took every other piece of the pineapple and just stuck it in water. Actually, including the pieces of pineapple. And I have this really awesome solution of pineapple water that I've been sipping on. Ooh, sorry, I tapped the microphone. And um, I've been sipping on like bottle. There's like three bottles full of it, and I sipped on one today. Managed to get the whole way through. Very tasty. It's like pineapple juice, but a little less sweet. Actually, significantly less sweet. Very, pla very palatable. I'm sure they probably sell that in the store. It's not. It's not tapache. It's not quite tapache. It's something completely different. I don't really know what it is. To be honest. Let me see. There we go. The honeydew is all done. Honeydew and cantaloupe are down. All that's remaining is the watermelon, and there's two halves of it. So, here we go. Now, apparently, we can take the, as Jasper was saying before, we can take the rind and we can pickle it. And I'm actually really curious about that. I think what I'll do is I'll try to, if I can, I will try to get some rind and do a little bit of pickling. I don't know if it's worth it for me to take the entire rind of the pineapple. Pineapple, well, watermelon. And pickle that. But I'm definitely curious to give it a try. Piece of that sounds really, really tasty. Always down for trying new recipes and stuff. So let's see, if I can get as much off the rind as possible. I'm gonna try to put the rind... I'll just get another bag for it, I don't think. I'm gonna do a very good job sticking that other container in mine. Yeah, that'll work out well. I'll put that in the container over yonder. There we go. I might need another bigger container for all that pineapple. Pineapple kind of breaks apart really, really easily. It's just so... It's also very hydrating. I mean, it's it's watermelon. Have I, I feel like I've been saying pineapple. Whack. Definitely not at all what I'm supposed to be saying there. This is not a pineapple. This is a watermelon. A watermelon indeed. Oh, I really like this song. Something about it is just very, very relaxing. It's called Rick. Recurring drama. That's the name of this song. Actually, I've been in, I've been considering recently. I want to look into one of those um, like Twitch overlay things where you can display what music is currently being played. I feel like that might be beneficial. We got some cool stuff that I'm working on in the background, where um, or some musical artists that I hope to be working pretty close with pretty soon and um, featuring some of their music. And so what I'd like to do is be able to share like what their music is on the stream at the time of, you know, the actual stream itself. And I don't know what app is good for that. If there are any streamer friends out there who do anything like that, I'd be curious to see what method you are using to showcase what the currently playing piece of music is. Because I don't really know. Mm 
much pot this uh I keep wanting to call it a pineapple and I don't exactly know why let's see what was it that I made with this watermelon actually I don't remember what it, no, 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 it was the heat exchange cocktail and that was hanging over there I'll sip on that one again that one had a very nice minty note to it Mm, it was nice and sour too. It's like a sour mojito. Much more on those sour lime notes. That's good. Well, we had vodka thing in that one. That was very, very tasty. Like that one considerably. Oh, come on now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm definitely gonna need another container for the rind. The rind of this watermelon. There we go. Actually getting a little bit easier now that we're through the tough parts. Probably could. Just like... Oh yeah, that totally worked. Oh, look at that. That worked perfectly. Nice job, dude. Ready. Put a little some of that watermelon back in there. Oh goodness, what else has been going on recently? Ooh, we got some upcoming travel and stuff, by the way. Anna and I are also taking another big cross-country journey. Just a little bit. Uh, in about a week or two from now. Going on my family vacation. Gonna do a little bit of traveling as well. Got a convention that we're going to. We love, we love Gen Con. Gen Con is the convention that we wind up making our way to every single year over in Indianapolis. So if anybody's going to Gen... Totally random. But if anybody's going to Gen Con in Indianapolis, hopefully see, hopefully see you there. You find us with the Board Crunch folks. We're doing a little bit of volunteering this year. It's actually super duper cool. We met some really awesome people there two years ago. And um, it was a really funny story of how we met up there. Uh, but because of our interaction with them... And uh, some of the stuff that happened last year, we're volunteering this year, so we got free passes to the convention, which is awesome. Gen Con is a dream, says Peter Chris. Dude, it is, it is wild. So when we went originally, it was two years ago. Like, I think it was one of the, they were kind of recovering from the hit of COVID. And it was, so, like, it was so, for, for us, we had never been to a convention that big before. And it was overwhelming. There was so much going on, so much to see. We did not make it to the entire um, um, showroom floor or all of the panels and stuff that we wanted to go to. Mostly what we did is we wind up doing a lot of play testing. There's a, there's a section that they do there called First Look where people can get their board games play tested by people at the convention. And that was mostly where we spent our time and it was awesome. And so... Um, yeah, so it was interesting that, like, in that year, it was, like, I think the least crowded it was, but it was bigger than anything that we had ever been to before. And when we went last year, it was a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. I can't even, I can't even imagine what this year is going to be like. And previously, the last two years, we weren't there the entire week, uh, the entire four days. We were there for just a little bit of time, but this time, going for all four days. Because we got the tickets for it, so... We're gonna, I, dude, we are so hyped for it. It is gonna be very, very interesting. We got some friends that we're staying with up there. It's gonna be very, very nice. I really gotta stop haphazardly cutting this watermelon. Don't wanna hurt myself or anything. It sounds really cool. It is, it is, I, I would say this way. There's, there's an upside and there's a downside to it. It is a really, really big convention. I think even, even I felt really, really overwhelmed by how much was happening there. And plus like, it's a huge, like, you know, dip, if you've been to conventions before, it's a huge money sink too. Because you go to like, there are so many different board games you can play, and there's so many different things that you want to buy and merch and whatnot. Oh god, when Anna was there the one year, she found there's this um streamer that she watches for cosplay. And the streamer she watches for cosplay also has a sister who writes books. And those books are really good apparently. So she was there selling the books, and Anna bought the entire, the entire book series. All signed by the author, 
and she's really I actually I think one of the books is sitting on no I don't see it there anymore otherwise I'd show it off um but that was really cool and just like all the the sheer amount of like I don't know not even just like not even just the board games like there's entire sections for like cards and whatnot or or artists who make their art and whatnot and the board games themselves that there's just so much happening and I can't get any more piece of that watermelon <laughs> into the bag you go and then all more to the second half of the watermelon Ugh. hello buddy there's one more piece of this watermelon remaining and then I think after we're done with the watermelon, the, oh, I just spoiled watermelon juice all over my feetses. That's okay. We'll be all right there. <laughs> Hello, bud. We'll pour the watermelon juice in here. There we go. <laughs> Make a little bit of a mess. That is okay. That's kind of par for the course for what happens over here. All right, let's see if I can get a little bit more of those side pieces off. And get more grind. There we go. Yeah, it was really cool. I think one of the things that we're really looking forward to this year is uh, at Gen Con is just the volunteering aspect. It was really fun because like we met the people that we're hanging with. We actually met because we uh, played one of the board game tournaments and we were dressed up in cosplay and we kind of hit it off with this one. I think with this one guy who was like, "Yo, I really like your cosplay. Can I take a picture?" And we sat around because we was volunteering with one of the uh, the, um, the competitions there, and we just just started talking and stuff. And it was totally random. They were like, "Yo, like we, uh, you know, we're wrapping up for the evening. You seem like really cool folks. Um, do you want to come out to dinner with us?" And we were like, "Yeah, sure. Why not? Like, absolutely. Let's go out to dinner with you guys." And uh, we apparently made a really good impression with these folks there. And when we came back next year, the dude that we met, we wound up uh, staying over with. Uh, you know, we got into the city. It was like the first time. It was like we hadn't talked for like a year. And then we were like, yo, like, are you still open to us? Like staying at your house for the convention? And we was like, yeah, man, totally. Sure, no problem. And so we got there last year. And he was like, yeah, now that you guys have dropped off your stuff, like, let me take you to this pizza place. And it was down like a back alley that I was like, oh, my God, like, Anna, is this the end? Like, this guy that we decided to stay over at his house and stuff, like, he's gonna take us to this random back alley pizza, quote-unquote, pizzeria. And it was a pizzeria. It was just literally wedged in the back of an alley. It was really good pizza. Um, and then that was the end of last year. And now we're coming back again this year and doing the whole damn thing over again. It's gonna be, like, really fun. I think last year, I think one of the... Call it a highlight? Quasi-highlights? Was, uh... Anna signed us up for a belly dancing class. Oh my goodness. And we were fully dressed up in cosplay. <laughs> oh my gosh. We had, oh, let's see. We were both dressed up as the twins for, I don't know if anybody out there is anime, anime incoming, but uh, we were dressed up as the uh, Hitachi twins from Oron High School Host Club. Full orange wigs and everything, sweating, full on suit. We were doing a belly dancing class. I was exhausted. I was embarrassed. It was 9.30 in the morning and I was having like none of it. But because we paid for the class, we were able to walk out of there with these awesome little like, um, I don't know what you call those things. It's not a hoop skirt. It goes around your hip, a hip, a hip sash. It had a little jingly bells and sequins and stuff on it, and it is just absolutely beautiful. And the experience was actually very fun. I just like, I think I just have a complex with not liking people telling me how to do things, and I was scarred from some previous dance courses that I've taken uh, in earlier pieces of my life. Um, but it was really, really fun, and I think, I, I don't remember whether we signed up for it again or not this year. I'm actually, there's a piece of me that I actually kind of hopes that we did, because I kind of want to do it again. But we might have just opened it up with uh, something else. See Peter popping in here saying, nice story on the, the, the whole Gen Con original story. Oh yeah. And I'm sure more stories to come and whatnot as well. That's the cool thing. I think there is a, there's a certain piece of going out there into the world and like making friends. That, 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 the other really, really cool part about it is like these were total strangers to us that we just kind of hit it off with. And there's a certain level of trust there that we, we got over, which was really, really cool. And now we're like, good friends. That's so cool. Especially like being, you know, being new to this whole adulting thing. Um, relatively new, I suppose. Yeah, well, any adult out there would say that I'm new at the whole adulting thing. My young brain. But like, it's interesting to go out there in the world and like make more friends as adults. It's a very, it's a very different process. 
Um, especially in something like that, like one, like one in a million, very much an honor. We hope to foster those friendships for as long as they can go. I have a little bit more watermelon to cut up. Gotta put that bag on the ground, I'm running out of space. Oof. Gotta cut this up into pieces. Peter says, I'm avoiding adulting. I'm still a teen, I think. I sometimes, I, I feel like I understand what you're saying there. Um, I mean, I've, I've been through college and stuff now, so I can definitely say that those kitty years, kitty years, no, not kitty years, that's disingenuous. The, the teenage years are definitely behind me. Um, but I can understand that there's just a lot of pieces of like adulthood. Like for me, for instance, I'm, I am the kind of person who was really happy to move on from my current situation. I always wanted to be an adult. There were pieces of being an adult that I always wanted. And you know, there's a piece of me that's kind of regretting that now, but it had to happen eventually. Like driving a car, I love driving a car. Driving a car is lots of fun for me. Or um, I guess having a job was a really interesting thing for me because coming out of college, I really wanted to do one thing. And I thought the idea of having a job was going to be another thing, but luckily, and I say this with a stroke of luck because it's not the same for everybody. What I wound up getting into with a job is something that I'm like I can feel really, really good about for the most part. Startup life is a little crazy to be honest, but there's a lot of pieces of that that I'm so thankful to be a part of. And that's that's pure on luck. And there and I will say, check in myself. There's a piece of privilege there as well that I have to admit to. And it is something that hopefully for the benefit of the world. We can utilize that to make this place, make this entire world a better place. Hopefully for other people who are coming into the adult world being like, Oh, what's going on? There's some people out there who are here for y'all. I mean, I don't think that I'm, author I'm an authority on literally anything, but if there's any sort of, I don't know. I like, I like to talk. If there's any sort of guidance that I can provide to the next generation in some way, shape or form, I'd love to do that. But in the meantime, I'll just keep on mixing cocktails and apparently cutting up watermelons and stuff. That's the best thing that I can hope to do with random pieces of philosophy here, there, and everywhere. It's so nice. Actually, this is this is really nice. I have not had... I was thinking about this recently. Back when I first started streaming, and I had a lot more time on my hands before I was really, really an adult out of college and stuff and with the job and stuff. I used to spend like hours playing Minecraft and just like straight up talking philosophy about my, my life and stuff. And like, I haven't had a chance to do that like at all. I just, I was thinking about that the other day. Like that's just not a thing that I have the time to do anymore. And uh, you know, I have like a therapist and stuff now who, you know, does a much better job than anything I could have gotten just by speaking to the ether of the internet. But there's a piece of me that's like looking back on those days like, huh, that totally happened. And I'm really happy that it did. It's, it's really, really, it's it's really nice to look back on. <laughs> and there's a piece of that that's almost embarrassing too. Like all that stuff is still on the YouTube channel because all the VODs are saved and stuff. But, you know, if there's any, if, I'm, I'm sure there's hopefully pieces of goodness that then somebody will be able to find there, if anybody at all. And if it just goes into the metaphorical ether of the world, I'm cool with that too. Sometimes that kind of stuff does not need to see the light. But it's nice to think about anyways. It looks like I am kind of on the last leg of my little watermelon adventure here. And I think that's pretty much it. Everything else is cleanup that I gotta do. And that, that involves being very far away from the camera, bore, like borderline out of sight of it entirely. We did it. Like, my goodness, we did it. We did it all. And it's still a little bit of a mess. We're not any farther <laughs> we're not any farther along than we were previously, but at least we cut up all of our mel melons and stuff. Peter says, philosophy is nice. Philosophy served me, continues to serve me to this very day. And at the very least, to me, philosophy is just interpreting the world around you and coming to terms with your own humanity in whatever way that that means. And it's nice because I think it offers me a little bit of a solace in some times of confusion and stuff. Or at the very least, guidance. I have a bunch of watermelon juice on this thing. Hold on a second. Oh, there we go, into the bucket. Very, very good. Wonderful, and that's, well, that's it. Move this cocktail angle out of the way. We have an entire bag of melon rind that I'm going to freeze and hopefully find something to do with at some point. We have a very big freezer um, that <laughs> evidently we pay for with our adult money. <laughs> 
We financed the thing. We financed the freezer. It's like, it just seems so like, no, no teenager go, no, nobody that I know of grows up to be like, I'll know I'm an adult when I finance a freezer. <laughs> it feels so comical. Absolutely love it. And I'm going to fill it up with pieces of, dare I say, things that I do to continue to feel young. Which is ironic because we run a cocktail show here, which feels very not so young. Should not be very young, but in a way, feels very young. We have this entire bag of watermelon rind. This whole bag of watermelon pieces. And we got the honeydew and cantaloupe as well that I would just showcase before we call it quits for the evening. Peter says, I started watching this channel on YouTube that mixes cartoons with philosophy and interstates them with reality using analogy and a lot of reflection and philosophy content. Good job with fruit cutting. Thank you, your approval means a lot to me. That channel that you're talking about, I feel like there's one that comes to mind and I don't think it's, it's not specifically philosophy, it's science and stuff, but Kurzgesagt, K-U-R-Z-G-E-S-A, gesagt, gesagt, G-T. Kurzgesagt, it's a German word, uh, is really cool in like science and stuff. I'm very curious this, about that philosophy channel. I love philosophy. There's this guy I follow on TikTok who I don't really know if he's a reliable source of information or not, but I like what he says. It vibes well. Everything you take on the internet, grain of salt. But we did it. This was a stream with a, with a lot of food waste. And you know what? I'm happy about that because usually we don't spend as much time on this. Here, this is, this is the moment where we are admitting that at the end of the stream, this is all that's left over. All of this stuff, I think a previous me would have thrown out, gone to waste, it would have molded, and I am trying my damnedest to make use of all of it with my sticky fingers in hand. I think you can probably hear my fingers just ugh, stuck together and stuff. I'm gonna take a big old shower after I get everything cleaned up over here. Um, I'm always curious to find more ways to utilize this stuff. My body can only take so much. I'm a very small man. I can't eat all this stuff. It would just be likely impossible for me to do so. Um, but that is all that I have planned for this evening. And honestly, a piece of this wasn't really planned either. But it was nice to be able to stick on to all the way to the very end. Just kind of get a couple of things done. I appreciate it very much. Our last comment from Peter saying, Oh, I love that channel. Quartz is amazing. But the channel is Hamlet. Arl. It's a Brazilian channel. However, there might be captions in English. That makes sense. I feel like there might be. I'm gonna write that down for my own reference. Hamlet Arl. Very cool. I appreciate you making the recommendation there. I will try to give that a check. I've got a couple of days over the next, I've got a couple of hours over the next couple of days where there's just plenty of time to explore. It's just gonna be a long drive. So that might be something that Anna and I give a listen to based off of your recommendation. I really appreciate it. So to everybody else and everybody included, that's all we've got. We've got a ton of this food stuff that we're hopefully gonna find something to do with. And at the end, we made a couple of really nice cocktails too. Things that will hopefully continue to serve us until I inevitably go to bed this evening. That's all we got for the evening. Thank you all so much for joining us until quite literally the bitter end. If you consider all the different pieces of the rind and whatnot to be bitter, um, then yes, it is indeed the bitter end. And uh, I'm glad that everyone was able to join us for this very special occasion. Thanks for the stream, says Peter, and have a wonderful night. And to you too, Peter, as well. I don't know if the sun shines where you are right now or if the moon is shining as well. If we are looking at the same moon, then um, hopefully it's the same moon. Otherwise, if there were two moons floating around the Earth, then we have bigger problems at hand. But to everyone else out there, if the sun is shining, may you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you're starting off your morning with a cup of coffee or tea or even a cocktail or beer, I respect your decision and appreciate the hustle. In any case, to everybody else out there, be well. Have a great rest of your day. And we hope to see you all next week for a different adventure entirely. Until then, y'all, I appreciate your company and it was a pleasure being your bartender this evening. Until then, bye. Thank you.